It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Paris Martineau is here. Jeff Jarvis is here. We're going to take a look at some of the kooky things they introduced at Mobile World Congress. A rollable phone, a see-through screen. We'll talk about the Supreme Court. Those big social media laws were, were scrutinized in court a couple of days ago. We'll talk about the oral arguments. And Paris will explain why she likes fish in a tin. It's all coming up next and a lot more on This Week in Google. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is, is Twit. Twit. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 757. Recorded Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. They're made of meat. This Week in Google is brought to you by Bitwarden, the password manager offering a cost-effective solution that can drastically improve your chances of staying safe online. Account switching has come to the Bitwarden browser extension. Now users can log in to up to five separate accounts and switch seamlessly between them in the desktop and mobile apps and browsers, too. These extensions help you keep your work and personal accounts safely separated. For self-host organizations, Bitwarden has developed a Helm chart to enable deployments to Kubernetes clusters. That means companies already using Kubernetes to keep their software stack simplified don't have to add a new service to use Bitwarden. Generating and managing complex passwords is easy and secure with a trusted credential management solution like Bitwarden. It's the only one I used. Wired named it best for most people. Honored uh, by Fast Company's 2023 Brands That Matter in Security. Well, look, it's no wonder why Bitwarden is the open source password manager trusted by millions and used by pretty much everyone here at Twit. Get started with Bitwarden's free trial of a Teams or Enterprise plan or get started for free across all devices as an individual user free forever at bitwarden.com slash twit. That's bitwarden.com slash twit. It's time for Twig this week in Google, the show where we cover the latest news from Google and joining me right now from her abode in beautiful downtown Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. It's New York, New York. Is it Brooklyn? I guess it's Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York, New York. Some might say Brooklyn, New York. I suppose you could also say Brooklyn, Brooklyn. No Brooklyn, one's stopping Brooklyn. you. Let's say it. Let's do it. Hi, Paris Let's Martin. Do it. Hi, Leo. From uh, the you? information. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Good Thorpe. Uh, to you at all. And to uh, wow, we're ending and the show Vietnam. now. Bye, guys. <laughs> well, is it goodbye or is it more like aloha where it could be hello? Oh, maybe or it is more like aloha. Yeah. You could say, you know, a good yeah. Thorpe and Vietnam as you yeah, come or go. For everybody. <laughs> That's Jeff Jarvis. Wait a minute. I got, I got now two laminated cards for you, so I got to pick the right one. One is just normal, and one is stamped. Emeritus. Emeritus. <laughs> <laughs> the Leonard Tau Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Crate Newmark. Graduate School of Journalism. Newmark. New New York Emeritus. Hello, Jeff. Hello. Hello, boss. How are you? I'm well. Uh, I want to get you this see, over with fast, me? if you don't mind. I've got uh, I've got a concert to go to. That's uh, why you dressed up for Madonna. Go. I dressed up for, for Madonna. Wow. Do you think she'll point, single you out in the middle of the I'm crowd and so. sing to you? Or pull me up on stage. Could be your big break. Yeah. We could sing together, do a little <laughs> duet. No, I'll probably change it to something more suitable for Madonna, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> your boudoir. My boudoir de peril. Leo's also trying to have a nip slip. Uh, just an homage, <laughs> right? That wasn't Madonna. That was Madonna. That was Beyonce. Oh, no, that was... No, it was Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. Yeah. Thank Janet you. Jackson. Oh, yeah. yep. Are you accusing Leo icons. of wearing a man's ear? No, I do have a Could nipple be. ring, though. It's true. You don't <laughs> often. You you may not be able to tell because you're only listening. But uh, sometimes it, you can here. see it through the thin fabric of my wife beater. Actually, I understood why. I understood now why the working guy wears uh, t-shirts, wife beaters, uh, to work because I was doing a little plumbing. And um, I had to get under the sink. Did I tell you this story? No. <laughs> no. 
Um, well, I've learned, uh, and you learn this, and you only do this once, that before removing any hardware, you know, faucet-like <laughs> hardware from the sink, you should turn the water off. Water off. <laughs> yeah, classic, classic thing you should do. It was straight out of the Three Stooges. I, I, I unscrew it, and it goes <laughs> like a fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> it hits the ceiling. It's splashing everywhere. <laughs> And I did all the Three Stooges stuff. Then I realized, oh, there's a thing underneath. And I turned the water off underneath the sink. Were there but, witnesses? No, but, and foolish me, I'm telling everybody. I should have just yeah. kept it Did quiet. your little tank top, did you, you know. Well, that's why I wish I had been wearing a tank top. Because I wasn't. I was wearing mm -hmm. a sweater. <laughs> you were doing <laughs> casual plumbing in a sweater. Plumbing in a sweater would be another. Another piece of advice, too, now, of things you've learned on this wow. show, and we've only just begun. <sighs> well, we have some choices. We could go to Barcelona for the Mobile World Congress, where there are very many silly pieces of hardware being introduced. I think probably, though, given the name of the show this week in Google, we should talk about the Gemini. Yeah. I'm going to say Tempest in a Teapot, but I'd like to know what you guys think. Yeah. Woke Gemini. Woke Gemini. <laughs> so uh, earlier this week, uh, and it happened on Twitter, which should tell you everything you need to know. People started tweeting pictures from Google's uh, AI image gemmer generation, Gemini, of popes and others. And, um, you well, know, had, Nazis. It had a woman pope and an, a Native American a pope. And it had a black man sitting with the uh, uh, founding fathers. And it had black Nazis. And and so I guess this offended people who believe that Pope should be white, as should Nazis and the founding fathers. And by people, uh, Leo means the Twitter user end wokeness. End wokeness might have been the giveaway screen. there on that. Um, it was accused of being uh, anti-white. That, yeah. Oh, see what Google did with their AI. They made it woke. Now, I've got a number of problems. First of all, there's a lot of anthropomorphism going on here. It's just a computer program, folks. And uh, so it's not, you can't call a computer program woke or or, or not woke. Well, uh, Google was accused of being woke in the guardrails that it put on. Don't give anybody white people is what their Google's accused of doing. Yeah, I don't think that's the case either. But I, it probably was the case. Yeah. This is in the tuning of the uh, of the model. And uh, among other things, they would give it rules. And uh, Google, of course, very sensitive to the fact that uh, often our AI comes up with, you know, because of its training data, racist, you know, kind of. Because society is racist. Yeah. So yeah. if you ask. Yeah. You ask it to, uh, you know, uh, is, you know, face recognition is notoriously terrible with uh, people of color. Uh, if you ask it to come up with a For president, be and, a doctor, be a white man, uh, yep. a nurse, it'd be a white woman, uh, a thug, it'd be a black man, that kind of thing. So Google put in, you say guardrails, I, you know, gave it some tuning. Uh, but unfortunately, they might have tuned a little too hard because, uh, but we also don't know what end wokeness typed in as the prompts. And... Um, you know, we don't really know. Anyway, Google took Gemini down. They responded quickly. they very sensitive to this uh, accusation of being woke. Is there a problem, Jeff? Um, it's not the problem you think it is. I, I think that the problem here is that just as social media is put in a vice, take down all the bad stuff. No, that's my bad stuff you took down. The same thing is now happening with AI. And the real problem, I think, is this expectation that guardrails can and should be put in such that the model maker can make sure that nothing bad ever happens. So that's why they did this. They said, we show too many white people. So it tuned it and then it didn't show white people. And then far right white people got pissed off. And we're expecting the, the technologists to solve society's problems. Well, the also, input is is racist because we're a racist society. If you try to adjust that, then that pisses people off. And also, if you try to expect this to have any relation to reality, it won't. It never has. It I also think that makes. That's, go ahead. 
Paris. I think that that's the key point is the expectation that there is supposed to be some one to one reflection of reality and the assertion that that this is making some sort of statement. This is, I think, as you rightfully said earlier, we shouldn't be anthropomorphizing this. These are outputs being generated based on prompts. Yes, but also based on a number of inputs that we're not necessarily seeing. It's similar to what we talked about in last week's episode. The reason why ChatGPT was doing all of that gibberish wasn't because uh, there was some (laughs) pro-gibberish contingent within OpenAI pushing for that. It's because something got messed up, and that's fine. You know, stuff happens. It's a program. Should uh, Google have taken it down, Paris, to fix it? I mean, I think maybe the argument would be they probably should have tested these sort of things more before putting it out. Yeah, but how can you kind of stop? What do I mean, you test? I don't, think, don't, you I don't test? think necessarily you should have taken it down. I think yeah. you can be like, yeah, we're working on it. Enjoy your strange pictures of, you know, Native American Nazis while you can get them. So Ross Douthat from the New York Times said, should we fear woke AI? Because they're going to make it into a, into a get oh, ready, God. moral panic. Uh, the New York Post had a fit about it being anti-white. Um, it, it also says, the thing about that fascinates me about AI is what it says about us. What, what our fears are, what our fights are, what our biases are, how we use this stuff. It, re- it reflects more about society than it says about itself or even about Google. I think ChatGPT says it quite well. The woke, I asked it if, uh, if an AI could be woke. It says the wokeness of an AI is a reflection of the intentions, ethics, and values of the people who create, train, and manage it. It's about the application of the technology in ways that are sensitive to and supportive of social justice causes. However, it's crucial to remember that an AI's understanding of social issues is ultimately... Well, now it's funny that this AI says it understands anything, because it doesn't understand anything. Yeah, it doesn't. doesn't. (laughs) So I'll stop right there. Uh, I'll ask it what woke is, Leo. Yeah. Curiosity. I also was going to ask it if Google is woke. But uh, yeah, it actually defines wokeness uh, earlier on in the response. The term woke originally comes from African-American vernacular English. Well, good. They recognize that. And refers to an awareness of social injustices, particularly around race and inequality. So I understand why people are so upset about being woke. Over time, its usage has expanded to encompass a broader awareness of social issues. God, you wouldn't want that. Gender equality, LBGTQ plus rights, and more. What a terrible idea. When applied to artificial intelligence, the term takes on a metaphorical meaning. An AI in itself does not have consciousness, emotions, or personal beliefs. It can't be woke in the way a human can. I wonder, it feels like a human wrote this. <laughs> as yeah, it, it does. As it doesn't possess self-awareness or the ability to independently develop a moral or ethical stance. However, AI systems can be designed and programmed by the developers to recognize, analyze, and respond to social injustices. It in must come that, out of some open AI documents. I don't know. You know, this is, Favorite. by the way, I don't, I'm not of the uh, opinion that it's, that AI is sentient or it's, or we're at some sort of amazing emergent property, but it does a damn Wait, fine what? job of doing this. I have to say, I'm very, it's, uh, see, it's see, impressive. Paris, you thought that he was going to be backing down, but at the end, no, 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 no. He came back to triumphalism. AI okay, triumphalism. I was, I was like, Leo, Lord. are you after all this time going to say that you don't think that AI is at some uh, pinnacle oh, no, point not of yet. the technology? No, not yet. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> we'll know when it's emergent because it'll it'll just come over and say hi. But uh, until, <laughs> until then, um, but it's, this has my, always been my point. It's really, it's the same point I would raise here, which is you, you're thinking about it wrong. You're holding it wrong. It's 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 just a, compu- <laughs> it's a computer program that produces really, really interesting results. I mean, they're ignoring the fact that, yeah, they're black, but they made pictures of popes and Nazis that look pretty darn good. Uh, it's amazing what it's doing. And by the way, wouldn't we want the Catholic Church to be run by women and Native Americans? Wouldn't we have wanted a black man uh, helping to write the Constitution? They're layering a whole bunch of human stuff, like values, morals, ethics, on top of something that's just a computer program. What I yeah. kind of always have wanted to say all along is, you, when used appropriately... These things are mind-bogglingly useful, and I can see more and more uses for them. And and I don't know if they're going to wake up and say, hey, Paris, 
I don't think that's going to happen, or maybe it will, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm thinking what's most interesting is their absolute today utility for so many things. I I am uh, I use my uh, Lisp AI multiple times a day now as I'm as I'm doing these uh, coding problems. Mm -hmm. I just it and it's very it's intensely useful. If you're giving it if you give it documentation of some kind and say just stick to this it is amazing it's very very helpful and very very useful and i think we should just accept it as that and so what if it generates pictures of the founding fathers as african americans i obviously it's that's a creativity not, machine it's creativity it it's doesn't not, know anything we're not asking yeah. a historic question it's not encyclopedia britannica yeah and if you think about Did it you see the Benito, like, go ahead. If you think about it as a tool, then you can say Photoshop is is Photoshop awake, woke. No, you know? it's like, just a tool. Exactly, it's a tool. Um, and look at these pictures; they're beautiful. I think they did a great job. I don't. I have no problem with these images. So I think Google overreacted. Yeah, um, I think there's there's several. Did you see that Julia Angwin is now who uh, is oh, now starting another venture? I'm excited about the proof. Yes. Oh well, I'm being rally about it. Because what she did today was she then we asked ChatGPT a whole bunch of questions about the election oh, and it got a lot of them wrong. We know that. That's not there's no news in it's that. It's not supposed to be yeah. actual. I don't think right. anyone has ever asserted. This that. is the big problem right. in general. Uh is people are get, ascribing all these capabilities to it. They're acting as if it's a human. Right. Um that's not They're acting I mean, as if it's gonna come up to you and say hi. Yeah. <laughs> so but I but okay, so yes, yeah, so I didn't read that yet. But proofnews.org, she's a former uh editor uh at uh ProPublica. Uh she, she launched she, the markup. She founded the, markup. the Wall Street Journal. This yeah. just uh went live recently. I and I so. liked her manifesto. I don't let me see if I can find this. Uh at some point, here it is, a letter from our founder. I thought this was pretty good. Welcome to Proof News. Proof is meant to be an answer to the existential question journalists are struggling with right now. What is our purpose? Oh, my. Um, and so she talks about the roles, uh, the traditional roles of the journalists. I'd love to hear what you think about this, Jeff. I, I guess you haven't read this yet. She said, traditionally, no, we have had multiple roles. Uh, primary among them are witness, storyteller, and analyst. With our press passes, we're able to witness events the public cannot. With our sources, we're able to tell stories, Paris, that wouldn't otherwise be told. And with experience and persistence, we're able to distill and demystify complex and opaque systems. These days, however, there's no shortage of witnesses. Obviously, everybody's got a cell phone. And storytellers, our news feeds are bursting with people providing firsthand accounts of events, large and small, and telling the stories of their lives. It's been a flowering of voices and stories, many of which were not previously spotlighted by the media. Right? She said, journalists do okay. still have a role to play as witnesses and storytellers, but I, ha I believe in this. I agree with 100%. We have an even more important role to play as analysts. See, that's what I think we do. We don't yeah. do yeah. the okay. witnessing or the story. We do a little storytelling. But mostly it's as analysts. A wash in information, she says. People need help making sense of all this witness and storytelling. Are the stories in their news feeds actually representative of what's happening in the world? Are they outliers being blown out of proportion? They often are, right? Analysis is particularly important in today's world where power is so often cloaked in opaque and complex systems that require hard work to un unravel. Now, I agree. Uh, right up to there, I think I'm thinking right on. Her next step is, she says, we're going to do this uh, with scientific, the scientific method. Which means you have a hypothesis. They say, yeah, at proof, we don't chase stories. We develop hypotheses and test them. We build software to collect data and use statistics to analyze it. We borrow from the science, the idea of peer review, asking experts to examine our work before publishing. We release our data to the public so that it can contribute to further research. I don't know. Jeff, what do you think about this? So I think the first story, I think that, I think I'm actually, I, I, one of my students was dealing with the scientific method for journalism. I, I like that idea, but I think their first story gives, a, gives it a lie. Um, seeking reliable information, don't trust AI. Well, the hypothesis here is then that you should, and we're going to prove that you shouldn't, but everybody already knows you shouldn't. So it's a, it's setting up a, um, a straw man. And they, that's at least not the they, scientific method. They do. It's interesting because they do it like a scientific paper. They have their methodology. They have an abstract. 
Uh, I mean, it's and they have their data. So I guess is this data driven journalism? That's not new. Well, but it, they're they're making so again. Roughly half of models' answers were inaccurate. A, we know that. We if you if you you know this this is misleading. Microsoft misleads by associating ChatGPT to search. Number one, that's the fault. But this misleads, in my view, because it, it acts as if people, as if we should presume that it's going to be accurate. And we already know it's not. Now, there's other things I would love for them to test. I would love for them to test how good it actually is in a limited corpus or corpora um, with summary or or translation or other, other things or analysis. Um, but this sets up the straw man of saying we're going to set up the idea that that people should use it and then we're going to prove they shouldn't that's not useful i guess to news. play devil's advocate i Please. i'm guessing that part of the reason if you're taking the scientific method approach to stuff like this is yes it's kind of a obvious answer that we shouldn't trust ai and these chat bots for a uh, pertinent election information but i suppose what they're doing is quantifying that proving something that we all know generally to be true but through rigorous testing and i guess that isn't bad well as a research for a research paper yeah i would i'd be fine with that and if it said we know it's wrong let's just see how often it's wrong i'd be okay with that the presentation here is you shouldn't use it because it's bad that's I, go, I, I looked yeah. up this. I have this in my next book. And I, I respect Julia. She's a really good journalist. But um, most recently, she wrote an op-ed in the New York Times trying to uh, get rid of Section 230. You know that puts my dander up. But I, I went back, because I quoted this in my book, to when the Wall Street Journal did its original what they know, demonizing cookies. And the language is all moral panicky. Mm -hmm. Um the largest U.S. websites are installing new and intrusive consumer tracking technologies on the computers of people visiting their sites. In some cases, more than 100 tracking tools at a time, a Wall Street Journal investigation has found. Right. So that's the that's still the ethos of this is we're going to we're going to be the heroes finding something terrible about the technology. And yeah, there's terrible things to find about the technology. I, I won't argue with that. But but th this sets up the whole thing a scientific method come up with a hypothesis that's meaningful and then test it but the first story didn't do that that's my disappointment okay i think that's yeah, I, I think, think that's, that's fair. fair and i also think that yeah maybe you you might think that that's kind of a obvious conclusion that they came to or but well they knew it before going in yeah we, we didn't need all that again yeah. If it said how bad, how much? Well, it did. I mean, well, they had experts rated. They didn't and, really say that. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. It was kind of a trivial first attempt. I hope to see better. It was sensationalism. That would be bad. I wouldn't want to see that. Uh, no, I hope not. Yeah. Um, this is an opportunity really to lose money at, at scale. And uh, if you're going to, if you really want to do it right, uh, you shouldn't, you should no way pander. The other thing about this is that is that what I've come in to see is that you should trust the model itself with nothing. When you have the model then work with a finite fenced off corpus or corpora, mm -hmm. then that we know seems to be more reliable, but I don't know how reliable. I spent an hour on the phone yesterday with Ken Doctor, who's a well-known analyst of newspapers. He started Lookout Santa Cruz. And we, we brainstormed for an hour of what AI could do for local journalism. But we got to know whether the tools are reliable or not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I found uh, my tool to be very reliable. I gave it a bunch of about uh, 10 or 15 uh, classic works in the Lisp programming language. And I also instructed it not to answer anything that isn't in those works, which, by the way, sometimes slows it down. I, actually, you could see it kind of scanning its data to find the answer. But every single time, it gives me not only a correct answer, but working code every single time. So I think it can be made reliable. I think it's just important to see, think of this just as another kind of computer tool. You don't assume that Wikipedia is reliable, although it's much more reliable than chat GPT. But, uh, you know, it's just another tool. It's, it's a tool in your arsenal. It's probably good to have some sort of quantification of how much to trust it. I don't think that's a bad thing. 
So in my my using of uh, AI, because I, I was doing a little bit of writing, and what I what I noticed from AI was that it's really good at kissing your ass. Like yeah, it is, isn't it? You know, it's really good at telling you you're so <laughs> oh, yeah. good and you're writing. Oh, that's so really wonderful. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of this it's is us to tell you what you want to hear. I think a lot of this is us learning what to do with AI, how to use it, where it is use appropriate, where it's not appropriate. So in that regard, you know, proof news saying, well, just don't get your election facts from it. It's not. It's not an unuseful thing to say. That's not a good use. We're still trying to figure out what is a good use. Yeah, but the, the way this is written, it's, you know, in fact, none of the five leading AI test models be tested. Da, 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 da. You know, here's the problem with it yeah. in scientific uh, terms. You don't come up with a hypothesis you already know is provably wrong. You don't come up with a right. hypothesis right. that nobody's really asking. <laughs> right. You don't come up with something just so you could shoot it down. And I guess that's why you're saying it's sensationalistic. It's it's My a friend uh, Dave Garion just put up a, a tweet two, two minutes ago. Proof News achieved its one and only goal with this article, which was to get people to talk about Proof News. Well, it worked. <laughs> I will say, yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's worth uh, noting that this was a launch as right, well. Right. You know, so of course it's going to be a bit sensational. They're going to be hyping themselves up. I'm going to give it time. I like the idea. And, uh, and I think that the, the premise is sensible. And we do need better analysis. Although this isn't the first time. I mean, that's kind of what Nate Silver wanted to do. It's all this data-driven stuff, right? When she was at ProPublica, she kind of did, uh, I would say, somewhat sensationalistic things, too. Oh, at the journal, she learned those skills, right? That's she the, knows that's how the, to, well, the cooking thing. Boy, you know, this What's is hard. news, this, in a way? This is a hard thing <laughs> for everybody especially if you're kind of on your own or a freelancer you're trying to build your name you got to do some promotional stuff i'm terrible at it which is i mean i'm mean really terrible at it so i'm i'm kind of with you jeff i'm i don't i think that that's a sign of uh, a mark of uh, somehow uh, intellectual uh, lightness in the loafers but um you know i mean if i were paris I'd absolutely be looking for stories that would make my name, right? It's a yeah, good thing to do. You got to do. Yeah. Especially, yeah. And I'm not launching a whole new media outlet at the worst time in journalism possible. So I assume the pressure has to be on. Yeah. If you're doing that. It's a fine, it's a balance, right? It's a fine balance. You have to do you a know. certain amount of, you know. I, I just, the, 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 fir the first article could have been a better exemplar of what they were trying to do. You could be Kara Swisher so. or you could be me. Somewhere in the middle. Uh, <laughs> I think there might be other options. Somewhere, no, somewhere in the middle of that. There. Are yeah, you Jeff, where do you fall on the Kara Swisher to Leo scale? I'm, I'm Team Leo, all the way, Team Leo. <laughs> I hide my light under a bushel. I think, anyway. I, I hate marketing. I hate. Lisa has to force me to, you know, promote in any way. I hate it. You're not a braggadocio guy. Actually. I feel like that you should just find us. <laughs> that we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have to tell you we exist. You should find us. It's kind of like a a big game of hide and seek. Yeah. <laughs> That's now, a speaking business. of AI, yeah. though, I came across. I put the link to this in the chat. I came across this week just this photo of a man smoking at a McDonald's on oh Twitter. God, I saw this. Didn't really think much of it. Uh, Everybody take a look at this. Does anything seem wrong to you about it? It seems normal. He's got a mullet. From like he's not wearing... Well, he's wearing a weird uh, shirt that apparently is sleeve Look at the shirt. Only. He's got sleeves, but there's no <laughs> oh. uh, front to the shirt. Uh, look at the faces of the people behind him. Look at the words on the Coca-Cola cup or the McDonald's. Look, it's it's AI generated. Yeah, you know it's AI. This one got look at all the hands. Uh, the, all hands the hands are bad. Uh, he's got two hamburgers, one in his hands and one in the... He's also but smoking in a McDonald's, in hands, which on the table. you haven't been able to do in 50 years. Well, it doesn't look like those are, that's not how McDonald's is designed either. Yep. No McDonald's looks like that. I know, I believe me, I know McDonald's okay, so too well. So you figured out <laughs> the sign at the top right. The sign at the top right. It's yeah. supposed to say McDonald's, but it's yeah. something It says Modigliani. It's, but I think yeah. the best one is the fact that he's got chest hair showing through his t-shirt he's wearing a shirt with sleeves but there's no shirt in the front is it it's possible just the sleeves paris i'm just saying just spitballing here that he actually has a denim vest that has t-shirt sleeves sewn into it 
It also yes, has a tail. Yes, but also look at his hips. You got <laughs> kind of the shirt kind of coming out through there. I guess you could have it, but it would have to be like a vest-like shirt. Oh, you know what? It's There's a the set. back of it? No, no, it's a set. So he's got the denim vest it's a one with, piece. with T-shirt sleeves sewn in. <laughs> and it, or it's a one-piece. That would be another way. It's a one-piece. Or he's got a blue Burke jeans with a came up with a waist. really good thing, which is maybe it's a very low-cut shirt. Deep ass <laughs> nervous. Why did you Why did you obsess on this so it's got much? A plunging I neckline. I don't no, I just hadn't gotten got by AI, I think, before ever. I don't know. I don't normally. So what was the deal? Get... Was this proposed as a real? Oh, we finally found yeah, the I answer, just, by I the way. Yeah, I saw this come across yeah, we did, yeah. my We finally Twitter find the freeze. answer. You can buy this yeah. t-shirt. <laughs> there we with, go. With the, with the chest hair built <laughs> in. Yeah, that's yes. not. This came across my For You feed a couple times, and I was like, why is this being shown to me? I guess I like, like, 70s and 80s interior design, so for some reason they must think I like, like, just this random photo of a guy in a McDonald's. But then it came across again yesterday, so I'm being like, oh, this is so clearly AI-generated look, and I was like, I've been got. This is from Granddaddy Jeff, not no Would relation. You have swiped left or right on him, Paris. <laughs> it's, it's listen, no comment. It says <laughs> peak male specimen at McDonald's in 1989. Wait, wait, wait. There's also there's a straw coming out of the French fries. <laughs> oh, you're so right. I'm such a fool, guys. <laughs> so you thought? What, 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 so your reaction was, hey, hey, good looking. My reaction was, why is this being shown in my feed? Yeah. But I just continued to move on. I was like, all right, cool hair. Yeah. We continue on. But no, uh, then it came across yesterday with somebody uh, whose Twitter name I can't say because it's bedtime bench, as you, I guess you could say, uh, just saying they're all AI. I can't believe that this is what the internet is going to be like. And we'll all just be like shrug emoji. I guess things are permanently worse and we just have to move on. Such a bummer. I the like internet was created and ruined in my lifetime, which is obviously <laughs> overly dramatic, but I thought it was interesting. <laughs> I like this response from Atra. That's me in the corner. That's me in the McDidliani <laughs> losing my religion. <laughs> Wow. The alien man. The alien. Look at the hand on that guy. Wow. They're among us. They live among us. They do. Um, actually, I thought you were going to ask if this was an appropriate use of AI. Klarna, the buy now, pay later Swedish company, says it's now using an AI assistant to do the work of 700 people, which it just laid off in 2022. Oh, wow. They're using uh, OpenAI. Sweden AI. was nice. Yeah, I thought Sweden was nice too. They're uh, they're using OpenAI. It says uh, they already handle it already handles two thirds of all customer service chats, some two point three million conversations so far, with the virtual Jesus. assistant earning customer satisfaction rates at the same level as human agents. I have to say, I think every time I'm on a chat. Uh, I hate these customer chats, but I always think it's an a AI. I never think it's a real person. Right. Yeah, I hate whenever I am in one of these chats and I can tell it's an You can AI. tell it's, they're always because, AI. Uh, yes. And like the reason I'm going is because I have, there's some complication that is not going to work for me discussing this with the machine. So I do need a human. Well, Klarna says uh, it's getting uh, the same satisfaction ratings. Yeah, yeah. How do they know? Well, they ask, it's you like, know. Like, like Air Canada. Right. It's ironic. I do think it's interesting, though, because, I mean, not that many people, I think, go through the satisfaction ratings unless they had an okay-ish time. Like, I'm not going to sit around right. and give my rating. Oh, I never do. If I'm or if you had a no, terrible time. If you had a terrible yeah. time, you might. We also don't know what like that culture is like in Sweden. Maybe they're just, like, better at it. <laughs> Their AIs are better. True. You know, maybe, maybe they're just more responsible just about like training or whatever. We just we don't know what it's like in Sweden. I think they're using Chat GPT. I hate to tell you. Yeah. Uh, the funniest thing is, Klarna just kind of they say it was just coincidental that we said it would replace 700 people, and we laid off 700 people two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> just a, there. This is in no way connected to the workforce reductions in May 2022. And making that conclusion would be incorrect, the statement read. We chose to share the figure of 700 to indicate the more long-term consequences of AI uh, technology. But it has nothing to do with the 700 people we just laid off. 
That's very strange. I mean, Google really did get rid of people in the ad department because of this. Sure. No. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, that's our AI segment. We didn't really. No, mean to... no, no. May I? May I? May I? I know it's not a democracy. M may, may I? I? <laughs> hey, there's a may good I? name may for I? an AI okay, show. Google, stop. May I? <laughs> Go ahead. May I? The New York Times Open AI, the Open AI's answer to the New York Times, I think, is great reading. So this is the New York Times lawsuit uh, that uh, you know said, well, you could basically read articles from the New York Times in ChatGPT. OpenAI says, well, they basically hacked ChatGPT with deceptive okay, prompts come on. that blatantly Hack violate. Is a, bad, a bad verb choice. Yeah. I, will yeah. Um, I, I put the quotes up in my, my Twitter feed for this. I put a little, the, the juicy quotes up. A, 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 a line uh, 75. So this is Jeff. They, they, they slapped it to. Um, uh, the New York Times. It the took tens of thousands complaint. of attempts, they said. They had to feed the tool portions of the very articles. Oh, yes, I, but we saw this. They actually gave it yeah. clips. They said, here's the first two paragraphs of the article. What would the third paragraph be? Things like that. No, normal people do not use open AI this way. And they, they're absolutely, but I said that. They're right. It was, it was clearly that they See, you're contrived on these products. I am because um, AI is going to be our master soon, <laughs> and you better get on the team, or you're the first on the spaceship to Jupiter. Um, the allegations in the Times complaint do not meet the famously rigorous journalistic standards. I just love that of it's the New York Times. Big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, funny. the truth, which will come out in the course of this case, is that the Times paid someone to hack open AI. Hack is a, is a hack is, is, is the a wrong, wrong word. word. Yeah. But they massage. The issue, I love this too. I love this too. The issue, uh, quote, whether it is fair use under copyright law to use publicly accessible content to train generative AI models to learn about language, grammar, and syntax, and to understand the facts that constitute humans' collective knowledge. <clears throat> that is the issue. They're right. And, and the rest is distraction. Okay. I just wanted to do that. Thank you. Tyler Perry uh, says he's halting his, he saw Sora, right? The new video generating uh, tool. Uh, and he said, that's it. I'm not building a new studio. <laughs> I don't need it. A very expensive new studio. Yeah. Eight hundred million million studio expansion. I feel like expansion. this is just an excuse. I feel like yeah. this is like all of the tech companies doing layoffs uh, a year or so ago when everybody else was doing them while they were making record profits. It's just an excuse to be able to cut back on costs and do things you probably already wanted to he do. He said, uh, I feel like course. everybody in the industry is running 100 miles an hour to try to catch up, to try and put in guardrails. Uh, he was, you know, of course, Perry very famously has built this amazing studio in Atlanta where he does his movies. He was going to add 12 sound stages to the 330-acre property. Jeez. Uh he said, you know, he said being told it can do all these things is one thing, but actually seeing the capabilities, uh, it was mind blowing. Noting that his productions might not have to travel to locations or build sets with the assistance of the technology. I don't, I think that might be premature because Sora is doing like short clips. Uh, they're very much like that McDonald's man. They're they're kind of there's little things wrong with them that if you look closely, we talked about this last week. It's obvious. This is true about all AI actually. Like anybody who's an actual expert at something will always see what's wrong with what the AI put out. Well, he's an expert in motion pictures. Uh, yeah, I don't think. That. I, <laughs> well, I, I think you're right when it comes to putting out a, a mainstream motion picture. But if you're uh, the the present the next version of a blogger. Can turn and a TikToker can th turn out pretty amazing little shows. Yeah, this is the Sora uh, trailer. So all of this was generated by an open uh, AI, um, and I think I think what he's thinking is, you know, in in a year or two, this is going to yeah. come to the point where I, you know, by the time I get these sets online, I may not need them. And I don't I don't think he's wrong, but he's also saying it's going to cost jobs. He's one of he's a major employer in Atlanta. 
These are pretty good. I mean, I have to say, Paris, we're doomed. He's gonna he's gonna use this to just put two fake people on, <laughs> no. on the screen. Yeah, in the Leo's garage just gonna be no, talking you know, to himself. I gotta point this out. I think this makes real human content, real humans, more valuable, not less. Uh, people will value. People will understand the difference. It's subtle, but they'll understand it, and it will make us be the luxury product. When's, I hope everybody, I hope every podcast in the world starts using Sora to make their podcasts. And we don't because I think that makes us more valuable. That's, I really do believe there's something that humans do that is not reproducible. Yes. So go ahead. Use all this stuff if you want. Um, Spend you know. a fortune on it. Speaking of all of this, have you guys been following the Wonka Wonderland controversy? No, but I love no. the movie. Timothy Chalamet as Willy Wonka. What a marvelous film. So on Saturday, there was a, uh, over the weekend, a Glasgow-based uh, Willy Wonka chocolate oh, experience. I did see this. Um, this is so funny. They, uh, you know, promoted this as this magical chocolate wonderland. They used AI to generate these really cool images, a big, uh, you know, flashy, uh, basically invite. And then people get there and it is a empty warehouse with a couple of the most, the saddest things you've ever seen. This is so Specifically, sad. Specifically, I want to get to the photo of the bad. strange Oompa Loompa woman uh, who haunts my nightmares. Uh, let me show you. I'm actually showing you the actual thing, but I should show you the ad first because the ad really made it look wonderful. Uh, and the reality I'm was very this far. Like the, the, the fire festival come to uh, Willy Wonka. People, this was in Glasgow. People called the police. <laughs> Families had traveled all the way from far away to go to this. Do it, they, do it in the accent, Leo. Do the anger in the <laughs> accent. All we got was a couple of jelly beans. This is crap. <laughs> they were very upset. Uh, let me see if I can find some of the uh, events. This is What's on Glasgow? Willy Wonka, the Chocolate Factory Experience. <laughs> now, they generated these. Clearly, they generated these with AI, right? These ads. Which you can tell. Yes. That's a, that's they a not only generated the, a the ads with AI, they then hired actors and gave them scripts generated with AI, oh, which my. I will uh, read oh, for oh, you please right do. now. Let's hear, let's hear what they said. Uh, uh, parentheticals. Audience members engage with the interactive flowers, offering compliments to which the flowers respond with pre-recorded whimsical thank yous. Wonky doodle one to a guest. <laughs> Oh, and if you see a butterfly, whisper your sweetest dream to it. There are official secret keepers and dream carriers of the garden. Oh, I can't keep this up. Willie McDuff terrible. gathering everyone's attention. Now I must ask, has anyone seen the elusive bubble bloom? It's a rare flower that blooms just once every blue moon and fills the air with shimmering bubbles. It <laughs> makes no sense. This is, you from, continue, Leo, this is from the, the New York Times. Little. One father, Stuart Sinclair, drove two hours from Dundee to take his three children to the event. <laughs> there were maybe 20 chairs, a couple of tables, and a half-inflated bouncy <laughs> castle. He said he paid 35 pounds, $44 per ticket, for his two sons, 10 and 11, and his daughter, four, who was dressed, oh, this, I'm going to break my heart now, was dressed in a Willy Wonka costume, and had told her preschool teachers how excited she was to go to the event. The children got two jelly beans each, and then they got half a cup of lemonade. <laughs> which which makes the lemonade really sour. Sour, exactly. As soon as they walked in the door, Mr. Sinclair said, they were like, wow, just shaking their heads and totally in disbelief of how bad it is. They had booked time slots to enter the venue every 15 minutes and were greeted by rows of un unadorned tables and walls of black fabric. <laughs> Separating. It's just like the fire festival of Willy Wonka Land. Yeah. Uh, this is look. But this Leo, when, the when, the kids, when your kids were little, did you take one of those like um, uh, Arthur skates things? Oh, you, you mean know, on, like awful. Disney on Ice or? Yeah, that they were just yeah. about as awful. Yeah, but at least they had more you gotta, stuff. You have to check out this one video I posted. They had some of the strangest costumes there also because they kind of just gathered whatever they could. One of which was just a man in a spook, or I guess a person in a spooky black mask that just <laughs> popped out from behind a mirror to scare children. 
<laughs> no, don't scare children. It's Willy Wonka. They, the name generated by the AI was the unknown. <laughs> Here, here's the man jumping out from behind the. Oh. Entirely dressed in black with a strange metallic mask, doing strange <laughs> hand like uh, <laughs> head gestures. It's just funny. It's some crappy theater group. They were doing. They're trying to raise yeah. money, and they they maybe bit off more than. Okay, the, so there's uh, an update to the story. Actually, there is. Here. Good. The hack. The hacks. Huckster. Behind Willy Wonka event also sells AI written vaccine uh -oh. conspiracy books. Oh uh -oh. dear. So maybe it is a fire festival -y kind of a. Hmm. Mm. Well, there's good times going on in, in Glasgow. That's all I can say. I thought it was maybe but like. Don't, a, don't blame the AI. That's yeah, all I gotta say. It's, you know, I thought it was maybe like a little theater company trying to, you know, trying doing the best they can. Have you ever been, Paris, to one of those haunted houses that high schools put on? Things like that. I love a <laughs> high school haunted house. Yeah, a high school haunted love... house is way better than that. Yeah, high are. school, I was I was part of a high school haunted house, Why actually, am I not surprised? What did you do? Day. What did you do? Um, Were you the ghost? Did you do your ghost thing? I was thing? in a, oh no, I didn't. I should have done the ghost thing. Yeah, you should have. ghost was fantastic. I was do it again for us. <laughs> yeah, I see. You're, you're so, you're so I good. I was ghost. in a room where it was like butcher themed, and so I was covered in blood. It was, though, super illegal. It shouldn't have been allowed to exist. It was in a dilapidated motel that shortly Ooh. after the haunted house closed was torn down because it was not fit for humans to be inside. And multiple times during when we were doing wow. the haunted house, the ceiling would just cave in in room. Wow. So we have to be like, all right, we're not using that one anymore. Oh my God. Definitely don't know why we were Was it a company that hired you to do this or how, how did you end up uh, in that motel? Was, I think it was volunteer based. I think they were raising money for... Were there charity? any chainsaws around Paris? Definitely there were chainsaws around. Oh, I don't uh, know. I don't you remember seeing any, chill, any adults. It was mostly just teens, so. Uh, I actually, because so we went to one up in uh, Santa Rosa that was done by a high school, and they had that was it like an operating room and there's blood everywhere? Yes, I was in like the operating room with oh the fake my blood God. and everything. I'll see if I can find a photo. Those things are so scary. Are you easily frightened, Leo? Um, <laughs> Look at that smile, that devilish smile. She can't wait to frighten she's you. She's going to do the <laughs> thing. I know she is. Uh, no, I'm not. But everybody with me, and I think they it was a bunch of teenage boys I was with. Uh, Lisa's son and, and her, her his friends and uh, and Lisa too, and they were kind of all behind me, clutching me as I was. We walked through the thing. It was really fun. I don't know. I, I mean, I know it's high school kids with you know fake blood and stuff. I didn't. My imagination is not that good, but I think they wanted to be scared. I think oh, that yeah. was yeah. Point, I think that's right? a big part of it. Yeah, you gotta so be a little. Scared. I was being the brave daddy. Just you know, it's okay, kids. It's just actors. <laughs> It's just You're ruining the, the magic, mind. Leo. <laughs> it's, it's just Paris Martino and her woo scary thing. <laughs> I do like how you do that. That's so good. Yeah, I do too. Oh, you're do the you, perfect how ghost. Do you, that's, uh, were you in choir? Just, you know, Is that how you... No, I was a theater kid, so yeah, I guess I'd say... Theater kid. But yeah. What did you play, Not like Paris? That. What were you huh? in? What, is, what were you in? Uh, I was in a production of Boeing, Boeing, a uh, little known. I remember that. Yeah. Air, I guess, air travel themed yeah. kind of, it's, it's like a, a comedy adores situation. Yeah. It's not a musical. It was it's a not. Um, but I was a German air hostess. Uh, <laughs> oh, do the accent. A, like, do the, the accent. I can't. It's gone. It's fully gone <laughs> from my head. Uh I literally can't even think of it enough to do it as a bit. Um, but if it comes to me, I will bust it out at some point. During Tony, the rest of this Tony, uh, Curtis, and Jerry Lewis uh, did a, a Hal Wallace movie based on Boeing. Boeing in the sixties. Oh yeah. Yeah. The is, basic plot is a, a man is dating a bunch of different air hostesses all at the same time because they all have different uh, travel schedules. Um, so they all think they're his like fiance. I'm this sounds a little risque for high school. Well, I'm going to think it Tony was. Yeah. She went to some progressive high school of some kind. Here is. Yeah. A, you a know, little... the progressive high schools we have in Whoa, Florida. Who's up next? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what lady? I know what you mean. There's Jerry Lewis. 
doing oh, a he was the worst. Oh, he's That's switching in a different stewardess. Poor Bertha. You put I think Tony Curtis day. must be the philandering uh, guy. I'm curious, Bertha. Do you get here around dawn? I sleep here. You too? Uh, I mean, you do? Uh, where? In the back. Oh, this is so unfunny. I'm sh I'd rather see the oh. Paris Martineau version, please. Oh. I know, don't we all? Tony Curtis has his hands full in the romance department. He's got three girlfriends, all stewardesses. Let me see if I can find it. It actually is, I think, a takeoff on a classic Alec Guinness movie. Do you remember this one, Jerry? Uh, Jerry, Jeff. <laughs> I'm going to think of you as Jeff Lewis from now on. Uh, Jerry Jarvis. Um where it was called the Captain's Paradise, I think. He's a oh, see, no, he's a captain, and he sails back and forth, and he has a different family in each port. So anyway, it's a wonderful movie if you ever get a chance to see it. Well, you know why I'm, I'm aware of this? Movie. Last time I saw Mom, she told me about... I was, she was great. She was telling me all this stuff about her first date with my father. And uh, mm. she says it was an Alec Guinness movie, and I'm figuring it's roughly 1954. So I was trying to figure out which Alec Guinness movie. This one came out in 53. I think it might have been this. But what's weird is I loved Alec Guinness movies as a kid. So so there you go. The Horse's Mouth. Oh, the Horse's great Mouth, movie. great movie. Oh, oh phenomenal. one of the best. He plays an artist. An art. Yeah, who yeah. lives on a houseboat. Oh, it's a brilliant movie. Gully Jimson. Gully. Oh. He was a great actor. I don't know how we got in this. Uh, Google co-founder Sergey <laughs> Brin is being fault. sued over a plane crash that killed two pilots last year. The plane crashed in the first leg of a ferry flight from California to Fiji. Why is Google and Sergey Brin facing a wrongful death lawsuit from one of the widows of the pilots? It, uh, it says there, <laughs> there was a poorly installed modification on the plane... Ferrying the $8 million, oh, is Bryn's seaplane. Okay, he wasn't in the plane. No. The two pilots were contracted to bring his seaplane from California to Fiji. An $8 million twin-engine Viking Air Twin Otter Series 400 that f that flying it that far required an auxiliary fuel system, which the mechanic, <laughs> the complaint alleges a mechanic installed from memory. <laughs> Without, oh, no, that's not what you want. Consulting no. a checklist or logging it with the FAA, the fuel system At failed. put on the Vision Pro. Plane crashed into the ocean while trying to return to California. Uh, both pilots perished. I'm not sure why Google is being sued, but I guess uh, Google and uh, Sergey Brin were, oh, they were uh, co-owners of the plane. <sighs> Anyway, that was a weird one for you to pick up. All the wonders. It just news came out. Have. It's just broke, didn't it? Somebody just put it no, in the. No, no it didn't. It's All right, it's been out for a while. Never mind. I just saw it in the uh, Discord, <laughs> and I said, "Oh, oh." I thought maybe this. So was you listen to the Discord, news. not to us. Yeah, no. I actually, that's the truth. Let's take a little break, uh, which I should have done hours ago, and we will be back with more in just a moment. You're watching or listening to this week in Google with. Jeff Jarvis, Paris Martineau. Let's go to Barcelona. Oh, good. For Let's the silliest concept stuff. This is Motorola's rollable phone. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Who asked for this? It's kind of nice. They have a Salvador Dali melting clock on it, just like yours, Paris. We spent some time with the Lenovo-produced device at Mobile World Congress, says TechCrunch cartoonishly exaggerated Crocodile Dundee accent. That's not a foldable. This is a foldable. A con it's a concept from Lenovo Motorola. Lenovo showed a lot of weird, weird stuff. I guess... I, I dislike concept stuff. I always like dislike concept cars. I want to buy it now, make it or don't make it. Yeah, I agree. They get you all excited. Yeah, and then it never happens. Also, it seems to just wrap around your wrist. That well, she's got. I think she's got Velcro on her wrist, and it's Velcro on the back of the screen. Yeah, who wants that? Nobody wants that. Yeah, no. That's gonna. I will. I hit my wrist on things all the time. That phone will. <laughs> I will accidentally send a text to everyone I know. It's probably more <laughs> to show off the fact that they've got this technology to make this device. I'm not sure. Oh, look! You could have it like stand up on its own. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's interesting, I guess. 
Like that fabric looks all gross already. It doesn't. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it does, it's been yeah. handled a little too much. Rollable, they call it. it has multiple That's batteries, but they won't say how many. All right, not excited. How about Lenovo also showed a transparent laptop? This is another one I don't really. This is uh, didn't sir. didn't Apple do this back in the day? Okay, that's pretty transparent. I you can say. see but right why? through it. Back but why would you want that? You can yeah, why? I don't know. Uh, augmented reality applications. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, so you got to wait, 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 wait. You know, you got to carry the laptop around to develop them. Oh. oh. Well. Uh, it feels uh, like it's kind of the worst nice of try, all Benito. worlds. It's not a very good window, and it's I not tried, a very I good tried. screen. You tried, Benito. You were trying. He to tried. He's come up with something. Devil's advocate here. Yeah, it. You can make it darker, and then. <laughs> oh, great! You can see your flowers through your laptop screen. Well, it makes you oh, feel better. Oh, a bird can come up to the flowers. All right. Uh. Yeah. I love that the comments uh, on this Verge video say, everyone's saying it's useless. No one's realizing that this is first-gen tech. It's only going to get better. Oh. You obviously <laughs> can't compare it with 4K. But yeah, it's a pretty cool concept. Think of this I feel, being I feel like I'm VR visiting headsets. the MIT Media Lab. <laughs> All right. Yeah. By ago. the way, that's what people keep telling me about the Vision Pro. It's like, okay, yeah, it's first-gen, yeah. Uh, let me know when the r real thing comes out, I guess. We'll talk about that then. Uh, Samsung's Another, also uh, showing off its Galaxy Ring. They've they they hinted yep. briefly that they were going to do this at their last Galaxy Unpacked thing. They haven't told us a whole lot more. Here's a picture of it. It's a little chunky. It looks a lot like an Aura Ring, a former sponsor. Um, I don't. You know, my problem with the Aura it was it wasn't it wasn't super accurate. And I, you know, there's so many other things you have to measure your sleep and your fitness and so forth. I'm not sure it added any value. Unknown battery life. Uh, Samsung says you'll learn more uh, when they release this at some point in the months ahead. And we'll learn more, including the exact sensor suite, pricing, and sale date. So, it's again, it's just a tease. Uh, you know, they could have gone to the store, bought an Aura ring, and put it on. It looks that much, that similar. And said, yeah, this is what ours is yeah. going to look like. Yeah, it looks pretty similar, also to the to Dangerous Things uh, Magic Ring, which does a lot less. Oh, I like a lot you more. Did, you bought I, that, didn't you? I've yeah, I've I talked about it. I think on Twit Pro yeah. Prime before. It is a ceramic ring that has um, programmable RFID chips in it. So I've used it basically to. I have to tap a work ID to get in and out of the elevator at work, but I'm very forgetful and often leave my wallet up in the office or at home or something like that, or I'm holding too many coffees. So I just cloned my work ID and put it on uh, the ring. And so I can just wave my hand in the elevator use it? and it takes me to my floor. I still use it all the time. I get You're so kidding. many. Uh, the security department is calling you right now, uh, Paris. I will say the people who have complimented me on it are the head of security. <laughs> at my building. He's like, oh, that's cool. Can I get one? And I was like, Do you sure. have it on now? Uh, no, because I didn't. I worked from home today, but I could get it. It's just but a black one. That's ring. all right. You don't have to get it. So you just put it on before yeah. you go to work. You'll put it on. Yeah. I just have it on my dresser, and I remember. I think oh. that's pretty cool. It's, it was really easy to uh, program, too. I mean, I don't really have any programming knowledge at all, but it was pretty easy to uh, figure out how to clone it. It's uh -huh. like a, I don't know, it was like nine digits or something you had to copy over. It was very simple. Nice. I, uh, you know, we're going to Mexico in a week, and when you go to those resorts, they give you a bracelet that gets you into your room and... Get you free drinks as you're walking around, stuff like that. I guess it's kind of like that. It's probably the same. Yeah. It's probably the same technology, actually. NFC or yeah, RFID. I mean, yeah, RFID. R it's RFID. Okay. It's the devil's yeah. mark. It is actually because if you wear that into town, they know. Sucker, we got them. Uh. We got one. <laughs> yeah. And you can't so, take so it off, by the way. It's like a one-time thing. If you take it off, you can't get it back it's on. It's like the hospital. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, they don't want you handing it to somebody. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, a story that interested me from from World Congress, Congress Leo, was that um, Deutsche Telekom. And this is also just speculative. 
but they were trying to argue that the, the their phone of the future will have no apps, only an agent. That I think they may not be far wrong. Isn't that what that? It's um, interesting, isn't it? R one did. It was basically uh, an appless, you yeah. know, chat GPT that you talk thing, to yeah. and that would do. Yeah, the rabbit. Yeah. Did you buy one, Benito, or you just gave me the link? The, what the rabbit? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I didn't buy one. I wanted to. <laughs> I was very tempted because it's only three hundred bucks. It was cheap. I'm. I mean, Humane's AI did. pin, by the way, has been delayed. Uh, by another surprise, month or so. surprise, yeah. surprise. Shocking. Although people who saw it at Mobile World Congress were actually somewhat impressed. It was getting good reviews from the demo unit at, at Mobile World Congress. And you bought one of those? No. No. I was very tempted. I, I really was thinking about it. Um, and then I thought better of it because you have a subscription and. The nice thing about the rabbit, it's actually it was two hundred bucks, and you only uh, and you only pay that, and you don't have to have a subscription. And with the rabbit, you also get access to uh, what should we call it? The uh, the AI service. What we call it? Yeah, uh, the humane AI, AI pin <laughs> worked better than expected. Writes Allison Johnson in uh, The Verge, until it didn't. <laughs> uh, but but at least we see pictures of its projection screen, and actually, it's much more legible than uh, we'd been told it would be. Um, I see. I wanted you to get that, so you ha you did that, and then you make Benito trying to get a camera to show <laughs> that on the <laughs> Yeah, the pin didn't seem to be pulling on the hooded sweaters Humane's employees are wearing at the show. Remember that was one of the knocks on the original launch video. As the guy put it on, and it was kind of dragging the collar of his shirt down because um, it was too heavy. Yeah, it's heavy, but apparently okay. it, it wasn't for Allison anyway. My early impression of the pin, she says there's something there, but it's not the thing. Trouble is, Humane's marketing has built it up to be the thing. Uh, it is a little Again, delayed. Again, it's the same sort of thing we were talking about before. You've got to hype up your product if you're launching it. And that oftentimes doesn't actually, yeah. isn't perhaps the right move. Yep, when you overhype, you disappoint. Are you, uh, you an under-promise, over-deliver kind of gal? That's a I really like to, rude question. Know, like I'm to, sorry. I, like I apologize. To, uh, <laughs> I would like to retract that question. I, I, I'd like to say, I feel like I promise adequately and deliver adequately. <laughs> <laughs> I totally, totally take that back. That was so inappropriate. <laughs> What? I don't know. What are you like that? You? I don't How know I if you saw this, but I hitched my finger on my belt when I asked it. I think maybe <laughs> I, I was channeling that guy at the McDonald's. I don't know. Hey, honey. Um, no, but I think that there is a, I personally believe that you should under promise, you should downplay it. And then when you deliver yes. something better, yes. people go, wow, versus what Humane yeah. and others are doing, which is over promising and under delivering. I don't think that works out. I have a paper that's due in, uh, May one and I hope to finish it next week. Right? Wow. Yeah. That'll never be me. <laughs> was that? Is that me and deadlines are in a constant <laughs> war, and I'm losing. Uh, absurdly, whoa! Oh, this is we already did this story. For, oh, this is your New York Post version of the woke. Yeah. Thing. I'm sorry, I clicked on this by accident. That was in that section you see. Yes, I see. I, I label it for you. I kind of like got these. Quite a few good sections. I don't mind there being a you know a black founding father in this phony yeah AI generated not real at all. It's the world we should what? imagine. You're you're saying that the world won't collapse because someone's prompt came back with a black yes. founding father. Big deal. And a messed up American flag. Did should Sundar? Some people said this is the beginning of the end for Sundar Pichai. I don't. I think that's overstated. Well, that was that was strategery. Yeah, Ben Thompson which, was really... Uh, which, by the way, by the way, I found the best use for uh, LLMs. I got it to summarize an 87,000-word yeah. Ben Thompson ben, piece. Ben gets paid by the word, so... <laughs> Jeez. Um, he yeah, people were the, saying that Ben was a little off kilter on this one. People are saying. Just Many saying. people are saying. They're saying. I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I honestly, I subscribe to Stratechery and we used to have Ben on a lot and I really thought the world of him, but I think, I don't know. I, sometimes people just, you know, he doesn't have his, it seems like he doesn't have the insight that he used to have. Let's put it that way. Katie Harbath kind of said that went to college with him, I guess. 
Uh, and she kind of wrote about that today. Said, so, you know, it just went too far in this case. Yeah. This is not cause to fire Sundar Pichai. No, not at all. Uh, I mean, killing killing the Chromebook. That would pixel be. is cause to get rid of them, but yeah. not this. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think of Apple killing its uh, car project? Ooh. I said this was a uh, terrible news for the lowly worm, um, a la Richard Scary. You know, the Apple car guy. <laughs> Oh, wow. A little worm okay. that rides. You have to be cut. somebody Sorry. who grew up with Busy Town to understand what she just said. <laughs> Sorry, to understand. <laughs> Sorry, there was a couple different layers there. You reference. know, of Busy Town, the lowly worm rides in a car shaped like an apple. So this would be terrible news for that worm whose name Wolf is Lowly Worm. Uh, you, yeah, you, this is uh, Lowly Worm. <laughs> In a, in a car there he is. You know, the only reason I know this is because my kids are your age and I read them busy town. So I do, in fact, know about that Apple car. That's not the Apple car we're talking about. <laughs> the other, there's you another know, I never saw it. I don't know. That's true. It could have been that it one. Been. It could have been like, we can't put this out. Scary already did I love it. it. You got scooped. I love it that you came up with Richard Scary, Lonely Worm, <laughs> Lonely Worm, <laughs> and I recognized it. <laughs> That's I'm really just proud of you. Bizarre. <laughs> um, yeah, it, you know, first of all, Apple never announced a car, right? Uh, what car? There's no car here. So right. for them to not deliver on an unannounced product is kind of meaningless, except that you can't develop a car without attracting a lot of attention. So everybody kind of knew that they were working on that. I think it makes sense. Well, what they said is they're gonna they're gonna. It sounds like they're going to try to take the same staff and say, do AI now. Yeah, that'll go well. Although many of the people in the Apple car division apparently were taken from Tesla and other manufacturers, and many of them were about self-driving. The first thing we, the first inkling of this was a couple of weeks ago when the same uh, reporter who's very good on Apple, uh, Mark Gurman said on Bloomberg, said uh, Apple is no longer thinking about full autonomy. And then two weeks later, mm -hmm. Apple's not even thinking about a car. It's all over. And German sources are very good. So I think that seems to be reasonable. Do you believe the um, meme that Chinese manufacturers of electric cars are going to destroy American? Well, they're much less that, that, expensive. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, but there's a lot of FUD around electric vehicles. And, and I pay attention to this because I've been driving electric vehicles now for eight years, something like that. First had a Tesla. Uh, then a Mustang Mach-E. I now drive a BMW i5. Lisa drives a uh, Mini Cooper electric, and our son drives a Chevy Bolt. So we've driven a lot of electric vehicles, and I love them. And as soon as you drive one, you really like it. But there's lots of issues, and it bothers people that, for instance, it's the charging. You can't go to a gas station. That whole idea of going to a gas station, the charging stations, many of them are broken. The infrastructure is not very good. Uh, and a lot of people don't have, you know, they can't have home chargers. They live in an apartment or they don't have a building where they could put a home charger in. And if you don't have a home charger, it's not very practical. It's not great in the winter. There's all I watched the video of, of the, one of the Chinese companies is doing the change the battery in three minutes. Right. Thing. The Chinese have really, but and this is what you can do if you have a centralized government that has a lot of power. You could say, no, we've decided electric cars. Yes. Uh, we're, yeah. you know, and there's a good reason to drive electric cars. Uh, there's a lot of pollution that comes out of fossil fuels uh, and burning them. Um, and, and they're fun to drive. I like them. And Only if your charging less... energy is clean, though, because if you're... Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yes. obviously, there are plenty of places where fossil fuels are used to make that electricity. There might be an economy of scale by doing it at a centralized location. But I think every analysis I've seen says it is you know, much better for the air quality. We have solar panels, so, uh, you know. And, in fact, here in Sonoma, it's, uh, we have Sonoma Clean Power. We have, uh, uh, you, if you don't get your electricity from Pacific Gas and Electric, you're getting clean energy for sure. So, I don't know. Anyway, yes, the reason people are saying that is because electric car sales are down a little bit because they're expensive. No one's really figured out how to make a sustainable $25,000 electric car, uh, except the Chinese. So maybe BYD it does not yet sell in America, but it's it's the number one car manufacturer in the world. So, yeah, I mean, for just some like thought on that, like I, when I went back to the Philippines last year, there were a lot of new Chinese cars on the road. Yeah, like, that's something I noticed a lot. Like, sure, there's a lot of them. Sure, uh, B BYD has both high end and low end. I mean, they have some, they have some really low end 
uh, vehicles. That's a this is kind of a nice high end uh, vehicle. They have some that look like golf carts, you know. Um, so there's a lot of uh, it's a it, you know the Chinese market's a great market, and I think if I don't know why do you think they don't sell in the U S. Benito? Uh, it's probably political. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, and we're trying to keep them out of the U.S., of course, because those uh, those tax credits are for uh, cars assembled in the U.S. only. Uh, let's see. What else? How about Bitcoin? It's back, baby. I've heard of it. It's back. <laughs> it's back. New Bitcoin spot ETF trading volume sets daily record. Bloomberg says besting launch day, the nine... New Can spot. you explain what a spot ETF is? No. Oh, sorry, I asked. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no, Jeff. No. <laughs> I don't no. think, I think, well, so ETFs, electronically traded funds, are... They're like mutual funds, aren't they're they? They're like funds, yeah. So I don't think you're buying Bitcoin directly. You're buying S some sort of Bitcoin vehicle. Uh, there are nine of them. They're all going up. They've broken the all-time record uh, with $2.4 billion in sales a couple of days ago. Spot ETFs, such as the new Spot Bitcoin ETFs, allow for shares of the fund to be created or redeemed based on market demand. In this way, a Spot e Bitcoin ETF allows investors to gain exposure to the current price of Bitcoin without having to hold the asset itself. So it's not backed up by Bitcoin. It's just a. I think it is ultimately has to be backed vehicle. up. But you're buying a share. I don't know. You're buying. You're not buying Bitcoin. You're buying a share in a fund that buys Bitcoin. I you hope. Know. Yeah, you hope. It's yes, a spot Bitcoin ETF is an exchange traded fund that tracks the spot or current price of Bitcoin by holding an equivalent amount of Bitcoin to back every share of the ETF that is okay. sold. The fund is actually backed by Bitcoin itself. So it does have it to have Forbes. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is currently at $62,000 uh, per coin, which is up $5,000 today alone. It is at a record high since 2021. Uh, is that now the highest? Did it get no. that high before? No. I don't think so. Is no. It? it was a little bit higher. Let's see. I'll, let's look at the uh, max chart here. The record Bitcoin It's very price. close to the high. The high is 64 dollars uh, wow. All time intraday peak of 68,990. 68, 68 on okay. November 10, 2021. Yeah. So it's uh, it's getting close. I'm going to have to start trying to crack that Bitcoin wallet. <laughs> wow. What would it take, Leo? What would it actually take? How much do you think you have on there? I know exactly how much I have. That's one of the beauties of Bitcoin. I know exactly. It's 7.85 Bitcoin. Um, I can see it. It's sitting there. <laughs> I feel like you could probably pay somebody to That's what I'm saying. for no. you yeah, and then no. promise them half. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Because <laughs> no, no, no. You'd rather just have the illusion of all the money instead of the I'm promise. Gonna, I'm going to work it. on it. I mean, there's nothing they can do that I can't do. They're using the same crackers and stuff. But I think I'm more likely going to find it by just trying to put in passwords that I remember than they are, right? I don't Do know. Do you think you used a password you'd remember? Yeah, why would I not use a password I'd remember? Because you thought it was so valuable and clever. You, yeah. you told up with something, no, no, they'll never get this. How many guesses do you have left? There's no limit. Oh, there's no limit. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I can, I mean, no, I have it sitting on a desk somewhere every once in a while. So is it this? <laughs> 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 well, imagine the heart, you know what? I'll have a heart attack that it goes, yeah, that's fine. When it goes through, yeah. It's like you're now a hundred, what would it be? 62 times seven. You're half a million dollars richer. What? You just got to wait for a quantum computer. It'll, you know, I feel like it's a savings account. <laughs> but someday <laughs> it will, it will crack. Here kids. Um, well, what you could do is, is, is all of your, um, I got it, Leo. You take all the transcripts of all of the Twig shows, you put that into an LLM and have it guess the most likely passwords. Yeah, you know, that's, I think it's really smart. that's probably a good way to do it, actually. 60,000, wow. That's pretty, that's good. What, you know, so we've been poo-pooing crypto for all this time and, and all that. Uh, were we wrong? The problem I have with the price of, of Bitcoin is it's not tied to anything except expectations. Why is it going up right because now? Because people, 
or buying because it. of the ETFs. Is it, I think it's the entry ETFs. of the ETFs. Yeah, that's right. Increases more oh, demand. Okay. That's probably what it is. Yeah. So I should really, I should really open that wallet and, and sell these right now. <laughs> it would be really wise to get it. How much would it cost in gas to cash a uh, half oh, million dollars if, out? If you just say, I'm not in a hurry. Take your time, and your gas fees are probably be nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry you brought it up, Leo. Uh, no, it doesn't it. bother me. Look. If the person that should bother is Steve Gibson, who has 50, had 50 of them until he erased the hard drive. <gasps> oh, my God. Now, that's God. a lot of money. When? Yeah. Well, yeah, that hurts. so we that were doing hurts. a show talking about Bitcoin. And he said, and yeah, this is how you mine it. And he just has a kind of a goof set up a Bitcoin miner. This is in the very early days when you could mine it, you know, on just a PC. The next morning gets up, there's 50 Bitcoin in the, you know, in the drawer. Jesus. And uh, so that's, what is 50 times 60? It's a lot. That's 300, that's $3 million. Oh, oh, that hurts. I know. <laughs> uh, and he just erased the drive. He just, you know, he wasn't paying attention. Oh. It, you know, he was just, you know, he was playing with it. Mm, oh, There's now we are uh... going to get, are we, when are, uh, Benito, when's Kathy coming on next week, right? Um, I don't know. I think she's coming on in a little bit. Yeah, Kathy yeah, Gillis. In a couple weeks. As we know, Kathy is an attorney who she is admitted to the bar uh, in the Supreme Court, can argue cases in the Supreme Court. She can go watch cases being argued. And there are so many important Supreme Court cases going on right now. We've scheduled her for to be on shortly after. Now, the, the one of the big ones happened yesterday, which is the Net Choice uh, case, I think. Um, yep. The, the laws in Texas and Florida that prevent basically prevent moderation on social networks um obviously uh that that seems like a bad idea the laws are currently stayed but the uh both attorneys general did you, did uh, you read appealed Jim to the Wu's column Court. in the new york times not yet but let me give you a summary and then we'll go to that yeah, sorry so yesterday was the oral arguments went on for hours uh four hours almost uh on monday not yesterday the majority a lot of, of justices can't believe that they like Kavanaugh now, just yeah. for a day. The majority of justices expressed concerns about how the law's core provisions would apply to decisions to this is important take down hate speech and misinformation and block users mm -hmm. who don't comply with the platform's terms of services. Those competing instincts, reading again from Bloomberg, left the court as a whole unsure how to handle cases that Amy Coney Barrett said had a bunch of landmines. That she's right. That might have unforeseen implications down the road. The court will likely issue an opinion on this uh, next summer, around about June, was when the opinions come out. Supporters of the law include Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Their concern was that these, it really started when President Trump was banned from Twitter on January 7th. Uh, he says these laws are needed to prevent discrimination, they say, against dis conservative voices. The problem is they also prevent moderation against all voices. Justice Clarence Thomas, who repeatedly said social media companies were engaged in censorship, said, I don't know of any protected speech interest in censoring other speech. Any protected speech interest in censoring other speech. It, but, but but it's just so illogical. That's like walking into your show right now and saying you must have on, the law says you must have on Jason Calacanis. Right. No choice about it. Right. Because you've been censoring him by not having him on. The real issue is the First Amendment prevents governments, our government, from tell, or state governments, from telling private industry or anybody what they can and cannot say, right? right. And that's right. essentially <laughs> what this does. It's, yes. it's the government saying... It's compelled speech is not free speech. Yeah. Uh, Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts said, I wonder, since we're talking about the First Amendment, whether our first concern should be with a state regulating what we've called the modern public square. Exactly. The state cannot regulate that. It's a violation of the First Amendment. Now, here's a great question. Uh, several justices asked about whether the law's anti-discrimination provisions could be constitutionally applied to Gmail or Uber. Katanji Brown-Jackson said, if we come up with some scenarios in this context in which we can envision it not being unconstitutional, why don't you lose? 
<laughs> she asked the trade groups uh, representing, the lawyer representing the trade groups. That's Facebook, <laughs> mostly Facebook and, and Twitter and so forth. Justice Alito asked whether the tech industry would argue that Google, Gmail, has a First Amendment right to boot account holders such as Tucker Carlson or Rachel Maddow based on their politics, to which the lawyer representing the trade group said, well, yeah, they might be able to do that. They're private companies. They could boot you for whatever right. they want. Right. I mean, this is the same Supreme Court that said you don't have to make a cake for a gay couple. Now saying, but oh, you but have you, to carry. You have to. You have to carry right wing speech. Right. So uh, which was the editorial that you want me to look at? Wu? Um, Tim Wu, who just from Columbia University, um, sided with Texas. Didn't like the law but said this is First Amendment absolutism and it means that you won't be able to um, uh, control other speech. Tim wrote a, a, a column or a paper in 2017, which I quote in, in Gutenberg parenthesis, in which he basically wants uh, platforms to be held responsible for returning to a 1950s sense of culture online, which of course is the time when you couldn't mention gay or, right. or interracial marriage or all kinds of other or communism or any kind of other stuff, right? His uh, uh, essay this, in the New this, York Times uh, a couple of days ago says, Texas is right. The tech giants need to be regulated. He tries so hard to be contrarian. Unlike someone, some of us, hey. you know. Hey. <laughs> so what is the first? Pot, kettle, metal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If this, Tim writes, if the Supreme Court endorses the First Amendment arguments presented by the platforms in the case, it could give Meta, X, and Google the kind of immunity few businesses have ever had. It's an anti-tech thing. And also kind of an anti-230 thing. But it's not immunity, it's choice. You can't walk into the New York Times and say, you must print Tucker Carlson. This is the equivalent of that. Mm -hmm. yeah i i don't uh, i can't agree with uh, tim at this point um no, he don't. says the first yeah. amendment is a brave and beautiful part of our constitution but experience has shown it can be misused the social His media 2017 paper asked whether the first amendment is obsolete the that social media platforms would like right. nothing better than to hijack the concept of free speech and make it into their own broad cloak of protection you know I don't understand where he's coming from. These are still private either. companies. It's not the phone company. It's not. I mean, you, are you saying that? Well, the phone I think that might be it. Is 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 arguing that it's a utility? He doesn't say it. But, but you can't tell the phone company. Oh, you can't take. Uh, you can't allow calls. Or you. I guess you could tell them they have. They can't block Tucker Carlson. Yeah, because everybody has the right phone, to use a yeah. phone company. So it's a utility. Yeah. So he's saying that the, these are essentially utilities. I guess so. I don't. I don't know. Siva Varadkar, who I respect immensely, but see what I did. He 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 got after me in, in the social media in social land, agreeing with Tim and saying, you know, you're not reading the subtlety of this. Like, I said, yeah, I am. I don't like what he says. I think he's given too much credit, frankly, to Twitter or Facebook. They're they're not the town square. They're not public utilities. They're just no. companies running message boards, and. Uh, it's ridiculous to say that they have to some sort of higher standard. I mean, if you're talking about blocking, that's one thing. Um, they should be well, allowed to then, block yes, whoever they don't want they to should. put They should on be there. allowed to block or ban yeah. whoever. If right. you don't have access to Facebook, it's not the it's end, not of, the end the of the world. It's not the end of the world. President the Trump bar. had a bully pulpit regardless of whether he could tweet. Yep. Right. I mean, the corner bar could kick you out just because they don't like you. Right. Now, if, if they see a pattern of kicking you out, because you're a woman, no, but that's that's the issue. This is something that really bugs me uh, lately is there, you know, Wu used to work in the Biden White House. There seems to be this kind of co consensus between Democrats and Republicans or left and right that we somehow have to do something about the tech sector, that there's something wrong going on here. We've got to we've got to do something with the tech sector. And uh, that worries me because when you get the left and right agreeing on anything, they could actually pass something. <laughs> they could actually make it happen. And it's, it is the wrong thing. We need like Section Cosa. 230. We need, yeah, yeah, we, yeah exactly. 
We talked uh, yesterday on Security Now about uh, the Nevada Attorney General demanding that Facebook not allow minors to have encryption, it, which would somehow protect. Whoa! Them. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> With some, he wanted a uh, he wanted a, a uh, judicial restraining order. Let me uh, let me look it up here so you can see the story. Uh, yeah, he says that encryption endangers endangers kids. Nevada sues to deny kids access to Meta's messenger encryption. I'm I'm trying to find the logic here. Maybe they think that oh, these underage kids are going to have encrypted conversations with child predators, and we won't be able to know. We won't know what's going on. But by the way, there's already a law saying you cannot. You, you know, that it's illegal to use encryption if you are a child abuser. I don't, I really don't understand the logic here. They want a temporary restraining order uh, on Meta to keep kids from using encryption. <laughs> Do they state at all the purpose for it? In yeah, to protect the children. The Oh, of course. Then no further questions. <laughs> exactly. With this motion, the state seeks to enjoin Meta from using end-to-end -end encryption on young users' messenger communications within the state of Nevada. By the way, it would only apply to Nevada. This conduct, which renders it impossible for anyone other than a private message's sender and recipient to know what information the message contains, serves as an essential tool of child predators and drastically impedes law enforcement's efforts to protect the children from heinous online crimes because they can't read the messaging. But I don't think taking away children's privacy makes them safer. Honestly. No. I don't think that's the case. But this is, see, this is what's going on to me is there seems for some reason to be this consensus that it's this tech has gotten too dangerous. Social media has gotten too dangerous and we have to do something about it from all sides. We are now, uh, the, it's time to circle the wagons, Jeff, and protect. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, this is what I write about in my next book, the web we weave coming out this fall from basic books. Um, Drink. which is that there's this, th thank you. <laughs> Harris took a, took a swig. Um, Gutenberg, everybody else can take a swing now. Oh, good. Thank um, you. We, we already had a Gutenberg. I already posted drink in the chat have one for today? Gutenberg. You did. did yeah, you mentioned it a little bit See, earlier. Should, just, we should, still got to get to moral panic. should point out, by the way, that the kid has the unencrypted version. And if they're concerned, the parents can go look at the phone and see the unencrypted version. It's it's just that in flight, it can't be seen. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, so Jeff, I interrupted it. you. Web we weave. <laughs> Well, oh, yeah, as I oh, wrote in yeah, my well, book, The Web We Weave, uh, it's a vice, coming out It's soon. a vice from left and right because the left uh, doesn't like big companies and wants to go after them. The right <laughs> thinks they're too powerful and wants to go after them. And uh, everybody gets political points out of it. Um, and, and the intelligence community, which loves being able to see everything that's going on, does not like encryption at all. And it's not to protect the children. Got bad news for you. Nope. No, it's because it's a, a convenient political enemy right. of the moment right. to uh, stir up strong feelings from your base, whatever base that may be, and to use as a weapon to, you know, further whatever aims you have as a pol political operative. You're watching or listening, and we are glad you are, to This Week in Google with Jeff Jarvis, Paris Martineau. We do this show... Uh, every single Wednesday. And the idea is we want to cover what's going on on the internet, in uh, media, uh, in Google, certainly. And we think AI. AI, very much a big part of our show now. And we think it's pretty important. And we hope you do too. And if you listen to this show and you listen to other shows on the network, I hope you think it's important up, enough to join our club. Club Twit is only seven bucks a month. We try to make it affordable and it is a big part of our survival, I hate to say it, going forward. Now, we give you some benefits, ad-free shows. You also get video for all the shows, not all of which are available in video in public. There's bonus content you can't get anywhere else. There's access to the Discord. But really, it ain't about the benefits. Uh, that's just so you can tell people why you subscribe. The real reason is, in your heart of hearts, you like listening to our shows and you want them to keep going. Plus... Being in the club is a lot of fun. There's a great bunch of people in our Discord. 
It's a great community. Seven bucks a month. Find out more at twit.tv slash club twit. Uh, more and more, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's tough times for podcasting right now. More and more podcasts are going out of business. The uh, It's just a, it's a tough time. And so we want to keep going. And with your help, we can. Twit.tv slash club twit. I will say also Club Twit members uh, get access to premium content like the photo I found of myself as a high schooler <gasps> covered in blood for the uh, horror uh, haunted house. Oh, oh you're going to see this. Where, where'd you put I'll, it? I just tagged it oh. in a message right there. Are, are you proud of, of your work? I'm very proud of my work. I think I did a great job. Uh, I scared a lot of people. Oh, my God. I was appropriately covered in blood. Oh, my God. Oh. That is great. Go. Now, what was the blood uh, made out of? It's a great question. I don't really remember. I remember it being it's in a large jug. Blood, blood. Definitely carcinogenic. I definitely <laughs> took a couple of years I, off my we life. We used to use caro um, syrup and uh, red dye number three, but I... Uh, I don't know what, you know, maybe you got theatrical blood. I mean, you probably did going to that pro fine progressive school. That you I was about to. to say, it was definitely a uh, Can we Can we focus on that photo again? Judge. This is not it's AI. Like your, it's folks. like your McDonald's guy. Go and look at the person up in the upper right-hand corner. <laughs> <laughs> also covered in blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it's, some blood going on there. Like, this is in the is back that? parking lot of the uh, dilapidated motel. Uh, I believe... Somewhere in the scene far behind us, there was someone serving chili out of a different vat, different than the blood <laughs> I hope vat. So. Um, this is but, great, Paris. Yeah. This is so great. You this are, is the sort of stuff you, you get hysterical. as a club twit member. Yeah. Just right you on. We're indeed theater club, yes. Yeah. I love That's it. That's true. <laughs> did you know then you wanted to be a journalist? No, not at all. What did you, did you think, think you were going to be an actor or a I thought I was gonna uh, go into like pre med oh, neuroscience. That's type right. We stuff. talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you you went, but I doctor. ended up figuring it out. I remember thinking like, oh, I love writing, but people don't make money doing that, <laughs> which I mean was not untrue. We mm -hmm. talked about the Lunar Library last week, didn't we? I can't. Mm, no, we didn't. No. no? Oh, no, this is a... your other friends. Yeah, yeah, I talked about it with my other friends. So you remember <laughs> at the, the grown-up table the, at the grown-up table. You remember that uh, there was a um, uh, a launch this week, uh, actually a landing this week of a lunar lander. First time since Apollo, since 1972, we'd Americans had landed on the moon, uh, and you know most it was a NASA project, but uh, it was put together by Intuitive Machines. Their I am one mission. Um, uh, NASA paid for it, but it was a private space organization. And it was a kind of a dramatic landing. We now know that they didn't have any altimeters aboard. Uh, that the package that was supposed to help them land on the moon, somebody forgot to turn it on before they launched. Oh, was and, that what it was? They didn't turn it on? Yeah. Ooh, and, I thought uh, it broke. Uh, I, I, John, am I wrong? I seem to remember. There was a switch that was off during testing. That yeah. they failed to turn on before they launched it. They turned it off during testing and Ooh, neglected <laughs> to turn it back on before it landed. So it, it has landed. Uh, it landed kind of sideways. Yeah, the it way, landed, arguably. Yeah, but it was kind of yeah. cool the way they uh, got it down. It turned out there was a science package aboard that had LIDAR on it, one of the missions, and they quickly uploaded code, woke it up, and use the LIDAR to land. So they, even though they didn't have any of that altimeter, they didn't know how far off the surface they were. The LIDAR... It was, it was just like a Google self-driving car. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? So uh, it landed sideways. It fell. It tripped. Apparently, it hit a boulder with one of its legs on the way in, and it tripped. But it's operative. It's working. The only thing bad is there's a Jeff Koontz painting on the side that got is on the ground, <laughs> which maybe <laughs> some might say... Not so bad. Uh, but that's not the story. The story is there is a payload on there from the Lunar Library. Uh, the idea is, this is from the Arch Mission Foundation. This is the the disc. It's a microfiche made out of nickel. And on here is the, in, is the entire wisdom of the human species. The entire English Wikipedia. Uh, the, the long nows... Um, 
Rosetta Project, 7,000 Human Languages, portions of Project Gutenberg's library. Those are the uh, public uh, domain. Drink. Gutenberg. Hey. Those I, are, those, that counts. That's been around since before uh, even you, Jeff. That was the project to take uh, uh, public domain works like Dickens and so forth and uh, put it into ebooks. Those are up there. Selections from the Internet Archives collections of books and important documents. The SETI Institute's Earthling Project featuring a musical a musical compilation of 10,000 vocal submissions representing Humanity United. You know what? I want to hear that. Let me put a pin in that and see if we can find that. The Arch Lunar Art Archive, including uh, uh, works from global, contemporary, and digital artists recorded as NFTs. So see, your NFTs are NFTs. on the moon. NFTs. They, they are on the moon. Do you want to hear some of the singing from the Earthling Project? Will they take us down from the moon? Uh, they yeah, might. Will the moon uh, issue a copyright? Let me see strike? if I can. Let me see if I can find. Uh, Did they have the Voyager Golden Record on there? It's like that, except even better. <laughs> I don't know if you can get better than a twelve. Even gold plate even record. better. The so, record's going to last longer, though. The Voyager is going to last longer. That's true, and the Voyager isn't yeah. just stuck on the moon. Let's see. Is this is this the sound? Then I had to. This is them talking about it. I want to hear it. Well, maybe I can't. Maybe we can't play it for some reason. They're not offering it. Uh, also, unaccountably, you'll find David Copperfield's magic secrets. The secrets to all his greatest illusions, including how he'll make the moon disappear in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a threat. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody on Sunday Someone on finds it. Some said, alien life finds it, and they're like, "This species is going to make the moon disappear." I think. Soon. I think that's a possibility. I mean, obviously, I don't know what this is for. Like, uh, if, is it so that we can recover our our greatest works? But in order to do that, we'd have to be able to get to the moon, which I think means that we probably recreated most of civilization anyway. Maybe not David Copperfield. I think if an ancient, if if some, uh, you know, a, alien species found it, there's a good shot. They're going to think David Copperfield must have been like the ruler of the whole thing. <laughs> Why else would he be Absolutely. there? And maybe these tricks were how he fooled us into making him the ruler. And like he had to tell somebody. So he put it on the moon. That's what I'm thinking. Um, there is the Arch Mission Primer, which teaches a million concepts with images and words in five languages, there's a private library, and there's a but there's just a ton of stuff. Is Books, the common crawl part of it? No, private collection. The Arch Mission vaults include collections from partners and advisors of important texts and images from all the world's religions. How are these things stored? On like little tiny ways? nickel microfiche on this disc. So we're expecting the aliens to have to be able to read a microfiche. They're going to see this Rev Media marketing logo and say, "Wow, I've got to find Ooh. out what's on there." It's just a big ad for. It reminds me of the Terry uh, Bisson short story. They're made out of meat. Have you guys heard <laughs> no. of this one? Oh God, that's so great! Yeah, I love that. <laughs> uh, I'll post it in the Discord. It's a, a cute short little story about aliens, um, but it begins. Uh, they're made out of meat. 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 They're made out of meat. Yeah, it's no doubt about it. We picked several from different parts of the planet, took them aboard our recon vessels, probed them all the way through. They're completely meat. Uh, and you go further down. It's ridiculous. How can meat make a machine? You're asking me to believe in sentient meat? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. <laughs> these creatures are the only sentient race in the se sector, and they're made of meat. They're born meat, and they die meat. We studied several of them for their lifespans. It goes further and further, but uh, it's like, how do they talk? And it's like, just through meat. What do you think is on the radio? Meat sounds. You know when they slap and flap meat that makes a noise? <laughs> they talk true. by flapping that's their meat at each other. We they do. can even sing by squirting air through the meat. That's how we do I don't know. It. So I think that's what the aliens are going to think when they find our microfiche. Uh, is be like, who is this meat man? They're going to think magic. that we are the most self-centered culture in the world. Look at all the... In the universe. In the universe. Look at all we have created. Look at the magic tricks we have created. 
anyway, that's on the it's on the moon. They've tried three times to get, it crashed the first two times, but they finally got it up there. Uh, uh, AT&T was out for almost 12 hours last week. I didn't notice. I'm on AT&T and I didn't notice. You didn't notice. Wow, just no one was calling you, Jeff? No one calls me. Well, no. Sad. Thursday. No, well, you know why? Because you have Wi-Fi calling probably in your house. Yes, that's what it is. And yeah. so it still worked. Uh, right. But just the phone network was down. Uh, started 4.30 a.m. Eastern time. It took them almost 12 hours to solve it. AT&T's description of what happened was a little odd. I mean, um, they still haven't really given a full explanation, right? No, they gave... No, but they uh, wanted to make clear they weren't. it wasn't alien... Activity this is this is the statement AT and T gave ABC News. The outage was not a cyber attack, but was caused by quote the application and execution of an incorrect process used as we were <clears throat> expanding our network. And by the way, that's just putting an ad in there. Oh, by the way, we were expanding our network. <laughs> but I don't know what, what no one knows. You know, there had to be a team of about 20 to 50 PR people. And they're like, no, 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 no. Okay, we got to get expanding yeah, the network. Yeah, that's what guys. it was about. We were expanding the network. We're good people. The application and execution of an incorrect process is meaningless gobbledygook uh, from any technical point of view. We So we have no idea what went wrong. It was a bad patch, right? That's what it sounds like. It was like yeah, it, a it bad could have been a lot of things. Yeah. We don't know. The but I mean, Department it's crazy of, that a bad patch would make it all, the all whole go network. down for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI are looking into it just to make sure, as is the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. I guess that's CISA as a part of the DHS. Uh, we'll see if there's anything Leo, how else. how many of your phones were affected? None, because I have <laughs> finally given up my AT&T account. Wow. Yes. They cry? I don't know. Uh, no, like, I you're went our in biggest there. customer. We didn't did. know people could have this many phones. I, I did. I've now done AT and T and Verizon. Mm. Verizon actually, the guy was very re kind of. We went to the store to do that one, and he was very resigned. So we're, we're moving uh, everybody over, uh, and uh, he said, "Okay." <laughs> it wasn't like you so didn't fight where, it. So where where is everything on now? Uh, we moved we moved the family over to T Mobile. That most of mm. my kids were already T-Mobile. I was T-Mobile. I mean, I I was everything. So mostly you it was me giving stuff. Do you pay for your kids' up. cell phone bills? Yes. You're, how old are your children, Leo? Is one of them in their thirties? Yeah, thirty-one and twenty-nine. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, you mean your Paris, father you doesn't have pay a talk, for a yours? Talking to yeah. No, <laughs> I've been paying for mine for quite some time. I bet you have. I can see what's going to happen when Paris visits the studio. F suddenly, Leo's kids are going to be there for dinner. So Listen, Paris can talk to them. I'm ready. I'm ready to meet the kids, children. Time to get your Me own. Me and Salt Hank are going to have a strong phone. talking. Alternative table. father, alternative daughter. I don't know. I don't want to have the talk. I, you know, it's I'm true. Just, it has I'm, to happen when I'm they're not ready. ready to do it. It's like, son, it's time to get your own cell phone service. I can't do that to him. By the way, AT&T AT AT is making <laughs> things right by offering a $5 credit. <laughs> yeah. Not And by the way, not per line, just per account. So, like, I'd get cool. one $5. <laughs> yeah. Talk about cheap. Jeez, Louise. Hey, that's like what you get for the Equifax uh, hack, Oh, right? I know, right? Yeah. Uh, are you ready for the Reddit IPO? Did you read their uh, 10Q? Learn all well, about. Well, me, I may not be ready, but the top seven uh, seventy five thousand redditors better get ready because Reddit is going to give them some or the opportunity to buy shares before too. the I. Yeah, they're not giving them anything. <laughs> they're not <laughs> saying, giving them any. Hey, guess what? You get you friends can, and family price. You can buy. You can buy some shares. Forty thousand shares beforehand. So Forty thousand word prospectus for this IPO. Is the cap table in oh, there? Boy. I wonder what the new house is on. Uh, yes, it is. Those? It is. You know, uh, one of the big shareholders, 8% goes to Sam Altman. Yeah, because he invested. What about, um, what about advance? I mean, I'll have to look or, and uh, maybe those, maybe uh, you can get ChatGPT to do that for you. It was when I failed to get um, Steve Newhouse really, really wanted Dig. And I failed to get it for him. Oh, so really? The second prize, which was Reddit. Oh, yeah. He bought Reddit. 
Reddit was basically uh, a dig clone. Interestingly, it was founded by Alexis Ohanian, who's now married to Serena Williams, and Steve Huffman, who's the current CEO. Huffman, who apparently uh, did the prospectus, the S1, uh, left out the name. Conveniently, they left out the name of Alexis Ohanian throughout the entire history of the founding. Oh. Didn't mention him. Uh, he That's oh, not nice. and Huffman, I think by the way. Also, go ahead. Notably, the filing revealed that uh, Reddit's CEO was paid 193 million last year, which is notable because uh, last year Reddit's net loss in terms of revenue was 90 million. They lost so, 90, you know, but paid him a 993. They paid 193. So you know, I mean, that's just good business. And they don't pay the people who make Reddit. Anything, including the sixty million they got from Google. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to find. Let's see. Advance has sixteen thousand shares, which uh, is not much, actually. No, they must have sold out earlier. Yeah, that's. Um, it's Stephen Newhouse has sixteen thousand. It's my old boss. Yeah, but this is none Advanced of this. Magazine is, publishers. Yeah, sixteen thousand one eighty two. Sixteen thousand one eighty two. I. That's like, it's an asterisk. Oh, it's wait a second. A small what's, what's, no, 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 no. 42, no, go over to the right. No, you're in the wrong. Shares. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. 42 million shares. That's of class A and class B. Oh, class B. A and class B. You could say B. percent of total outstanding. Yes. So Steve Newhouse alone has 30%. Um, a third. As does Advance. Advance company, has a third. And Advance has a third. Yeah. So they own two thirds. So if the, if the um, IPO is going to be at what total amount? What's it going to value the company at? Uh, I can't remember. Do you know, Paris? Let me see if I can find that. Uh, not off the top of my it, head. It might not be in the S1, actually. I don't remember. Because uh, what, what Steve did was he bought it for very, very little money and then spun it off so they could create equity, so they could build this kind of value with employees and such. And it was a very smart strategy. Yeah. He gave up some ownership of it to create the equity. But he still has a third. That's pretty good. He has two thirds. He has two thirds because he the has company. the advance is, is his too, right? Unless it's the same third. No. I don't think so, no. I'm not, I don't, it's not saying what, what the amount Reddit is. IPO valuation. There you it go. It was valuation at with 5 billion, I think. Yeah, 5 billion. Yeah. But, uh, but Reddit's so, bankers are seeking a valuation of at least 5 billion in uh, the IPO. Uh, so, two thirds of 5 billion. That's not shabby. That's not shabby at all. For a very small investment, and you get a few billion dollars, it helps when, you know, Cotty and Ass didn't do it so well. The newspapers are uh, newspapers, you know, that, that eases the pain. As Reddit points out, though, and I wonder, you know, by the way, they may not go IPO. They just filed, you know, the requisite papers they haven't said we're going to do it for sure uh and one of the real issues is that it read its value really comes from sixty thousand unpaid volunteer moderators yep <clears throat> and, and and all the content comes from you and me and everybody else who uses it not from reddit so this is another case of a company i mean that five billion dollars is value generated by everybody who posts on reddit right and and same thing as i said they got 60 million just from google for buying for ai rights and then reportedly WordPress and um, Tumblr are, are doing a similar de deal. And I'm on WordPress, and am I getting any value of that? No. no. Though you could argue that in the case of Reddit, this is how you can use this service for free because they're making this money. You right. can argue both ways. Uh, there's a lot yeah. of ads, by the way, on Reddit. I pay for Reddit, but apparently I'm one of the very few <laughs> who does. Uh, it is not a profitable I'm enterprise. I'm still shocked by the fact that one of the ways that Reddit made money, obviously it's kind of negligible in comparison to everything else, is through like currencies and little tokens like Reddit Gold. Right. And they've changed that system over the last year in a way that I, I use Reddit all the time. I used to see people awarding Reddit Gold to comments and posts left and right. It was a common daily occurrence. I cannot remember the last time I've seen it since they changed they it. They took to it like away. A, a big up. They No, they changed it to like you can pay to have like a golden upvote now. Oh. And no one is doing that, which is just an odd move financially. Can I ask you both an old fart question? Yes. I don't really use Reddit. And I know it's valuable. I know there's stuff there. You both use it, but it, it befuddles me. It's a lot rather like Discord. Um, what's the best way to use Reddit? 
funnel all your Google searches that way. Yeah, just just do. I mean, site okay, yes. Colon, there's Reddit. one use <laughs> that is like, yeah, if you're looking for specific answers on something, you could search Google. But right, add but do Reddit you check in then. regularly at Reddit? And say, I, I check in see regularly at Reddit. I have just a bunch of different like communities that that's I subscribe the key. to. Like, Crazy for ones? Instance, that's the whole like, key. You know what um, you follow, what the communities like, you follow are. Different video games that I'm playing, I will subscribe to those communities and get really into it. If I'm watching new TV shows, I will uh, get really... I, I honestly mostly use Reddit to keep up with the various reality franchises that I follow because I love the intensity of those communities and that they're always posting about one of the characters in the you know show doing X and Y. So it's, I don't know, just Do you use it for work? Um, yeah, I have like a work Reddit account as well that I will sometimes use to like reach out to sources and things like that. If I'm looking, I'm trying to think of a good example. Like sometimes people will post like on Reddit about something happening to them and then I'll want to interview them about it. So then I uh -huh. will reach out to them. Via Leo, do you Reddit. use it for work? Yeah, well, so it's part of my beat check. So every, I'm constantly checking tech meme, a uh, variety of, of RSS feeds and Reddit uh for news and that's and actually a lot of the reddit Ooh. stuff gets on this show this is where i put the put the reddit stuff because it's the crazy silly. stuff <laughs> yeah but I, if you look at the communities i follow i don't know if you can you i don't know if you can go look at somebody the community somebody follows here's the communities but there's quite a few so you follow the wow. key is you follow the stuff you're interested in basically you yep. should absolutely follow slash r slash politics right uh r slash news those are that's two good places to start, but you would want to add, you know, maybe I don't know if there's a journalism. Um, yeah, there is, and there's sometimes some interesting yeah. stuff in there. Follow categories um, you're interested in. I'm following. Uh, Petaluma has a subreddit. Santa Rosa has a subreddit. The languages. And so I when use. you follow, trying to just just uh, trying to scan Reddit doesn't strike me as very easy. No, no. So when you follow it, and then so you, I mean, you follow all these, and then it makes a feed this is the of feed, the just like Instagram from all the different yeah it's just okay. like Instagram oh it's so you don't Reddit go is... to the uh, to the subreddit no no it all comes to your you feed you can you can yeah yes. it comes to your feed That's it's kind of like you can also choose, you know to use is... Twitter as an example you're on Twitter you're following individual users who create the content that populates your feed in this you're following subreddits uh, mm -hmm. where users post on specific themes and then once you follow those subreddits your feed is populated with posts from a variety of users on the themes you have chosen the other thing that's important is the feed is not is a default organized by best which usually means most upvoted but there are other categories like hot new top and rising so you can if you sort it differently you'll get different stuff in the in the uh in the feed so if i do you uh, do you bother upvoting things i actually am not that active i very rarely post something um I upvote quite frequently. I've started upvoting and I vote. Yeah, and yeah. Voting is valuable because you see, uh, you know, this has forty thousand karma, forty thousand. So an up arrow adds one, and down arrow takes one away. There's also comments, and uh, the comments can be good and can be bad depending on uh, what you're what you're following. So. Um, so, for instance, you can go over to ChatGPT on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. There, oh, we've left. oh, I lost but it. But it was about yeah. the it was about the strange chat GPT recent responses. Oh, oh, you know why? That's what we were talking about last week. That's my recent. I, that's my recent checks. Okay. Ah. Uh, so that's what this is stuff that I have just that I've opened directly on Reddit. Us on the right. So that's that's all that is. You see, the top one is lowly worm in his car shaped like an apple. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> wait, 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 so you looked that up on Reddit? No, I looked it up on Google, but guess what one of the top results was? It was a Reddit. Reddit. Oh. So that's the other thing. Google relies heavily on Reddit. In fact, we learned in the prospectus that they spend 60 million. They just started giving them $60 just million dollars a year. Not, And that's partly for training AI, but I think also Google understands that Reddit's a very big part of its search results. Without Reddit, Google's not nearly as good. It's really good if, you you're, if you use Reddit. It's really good if, like, you want to know something really obscure, like, what's the best shower head? And there's probably a slash, r slash shower heads. If not, and, and there'll be, like, ten people. You know, somebody gave us a perfect example, maple syrup. There is a slash r maple syrup. 
And if you're looking for what maple syrup to buy, going to r slash maple syrup is a really good idea <laughs> because that's where the people who are most invested in the in maple syrup live. And they will tell you everything you'd ever want to know about maple syrup wow. and what the best maple syrup is and why this is good and why this isn't good. These are a lot of people who make them, but also people who buy them. So I, I saw somebody commenting. He was in the store and he was trying to figure out which maple syrup to buy. And he asked on our maple syrup. And of course, those are the people to ask. So if it's something really unique, really specialized, it's it's highly likely that they are all on Reddit. That's yeah, it's, it's, like I like the raw denim subreddit for whenever I have questions about the subculture related to raw denim jeans or buy it for life, which is kind of a larger subreddit about products like, I don't know, the best shower head that would last you for your whole life or what cast iron pan is the best. You the know, other thing that's like fun that. to do is there are weird things. You've given me actually, Paris, some interesting weird subreddits there are oddball subreddits and it's good to throw in one of the what like what is this thing is a good one or you know just weird what is what is the weird subreddit that you were following paris that you told us about there's probably quite i a few. <laughs> don't yeah. know which one slash you're the tunnel? one that i'm slash channels the tunnels? one that i'm thinking tunnels? of right yeah. now is a strange one called info warrior rides <laughs> uh r slash info warrior rides it is uh for the cars that are info wars like where it's like cars that have all those crazy messages on them with like stickers. Oh, and I got to like submit. Uh, oh dear. And so it's, it's Look really good. This. There's a lot of like, if you go to the, I guess like go to like top of all year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Holy cow. There's so the thing about this is for a while <laughs> it's fun. And then you take it off and you put something else in there. Cause after a while, yeah. You know, you don't want this in your too much of this in it's your. It's like feed. the Bollard Association, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. Just, but that's the thing. Yeah, Bollards. Yeah, you just add it, and then, and then you laugh. You laugh, and, and then you take it off because because it will kind of take over your feed if you're not careful. So this sure. is a good one. Thank I like you for it. this. Yeah, this is good. Reddit's amazing, but oh it, yeah, it will only be amazing for a month, and then something else will be the next thing. Well, no, it's the, the thing with Reddit did so so after Steve Newhouse bought it, he called me. I had just left the company and he said, you know, we, there's this bad stuff there. What do we do? And I didn't have an answer for him, but Reddit found the answer by having each subreddit as its own community. That I think was the response to Mike Masnick's theorem about the impossibility of moderating at scale. I think Reddit was always that way. Wasn't it? Didn't it always no. have subreddits? No. It has yeah, subreddits, but it had it. a lot of bad stuff. And I think they gave more authority to the subreddits. And they also had the courage to kill some subreddits. Well, like, and this you know, was this was one of the reasons yeah. why Huffman and Ohini and our friends anymore, in the beginning of the pandemic, there was a real kerfuffle over Black Lives Matter and what to allow on the site and not. Alexis was very aggressive in saying, you got to take this stuff down. Huffman said no. And uh, they, they right. had a fall. I believe out. like the Donald subreddit, um, as well as r slash uh, Great Awakening, a QAnon subreddit, were some of the ones that kind of uh, broke the... Uh, floodgates on this. There was also during the, um, I'm forgetting the name of uh, her last name is Pow of the woman. Oh who's yeah, Ellen Pow. Oh, yes, yes. Ellen Pow. Um, she received a lot of criticism yes. online for moderating the subreddit "Fat People Hate" and eventually taking it down, which is just a blatant fat phobia subreddit. It's t this is a, they have the same problem though that Twitter does and everybody else does. Yeah, they do, but they, but it's but it's not at the same scale where you have one service has to do everything. There are reddits, you, there are subreddits you don't want to go in because they're nasty. That's they right. They have their own rules and they do it, um, and you know to avoid them, and and it doesn't affect your life because you don't follow. Yeah, them. unlike Twitter, they don't leak into your feed. There's right. no cross pollinization yeah. of feeds. So if you just follow r slash politics, that's all you're going to see. And you won't see, you know, fat people shaming her. What? Putting stuff in my feed all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, that's the new thing. I turned that off. That's you've got to turn off yeah. feed recommendations. Yeah, no recommendations. Um, oh. yeah. I will say one other plug for a subreddit that I'm actually obsessed with as of late. I'm going to send you, I'm going to post in the Discord uh, a, twi a Twitter account that is 
uh, just a, a cream of the crop version. If it's called male living spaces, it is <laughs> ostensibly a subreddit where men post their living spaces and be like, oh, like here's my apartment or, you know, things like that. But it somehow, over the last, I've been following this forever. It's turned into the saddest place in the world. It's just the, look at this. This one's a double decker couch. What do you think of my uh, double decker like couch? I think it's a great idea. I think it's uh, wonderful. You've got this room that just has a lamp this or a fan that's with sideways. Fan that will chop your head off if you get too close. That's good. That's good. Male 30 it's living really... with 40 male rabbits. Okay. Yep. Yum, yum. Why not? It's beautiful. There recently have been a couple of, uh, a lot of the posts in this subreddit are like, just got divorced. Here's my apartment oh. with just a chair in it. Oh, <laughs> oh this is the it's saddest beautiful. picture I've ever seen. Staying at my brother's place for the weekend and came across this. It's the silverware drawer. <laughs> it's, it's mostly empty except for one organizer with two forks, two spoons, and a knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Did I, did I tell you how, <laughs> how my wife was unimpressed with my discovery that kitchen cabinets are the exact right space to store New York Times? Um, wow, that's very. Uh, do not store Bob New York Kira Times. Period. No. Period. Do not store New York well, Times. Well, they weren't red. I wasn't finished. Throw them out. End of the day. They're done. Get rid of them. Uh, that's a good one. I like that. Male living spaces. That's good, yeah. And as a man, I recognize every <laughs> one of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's God. True. Yeah. That's the way to live. See, Paris, you'd never understand that. You've got a, a light switch in your fireplace. It's true. Uh, I've got a. Uh, I've got everything going on. I've you've got, got the monster. A male shaped, you know, she yeah. has plants. lamp. You have plants. <laughs> I have, do have plants. You have uh, now. Is My the purple just for the over. show, or do you have that purple light on always? I have that purple light on when I have like guests over. There's like a fun occasion for the purple light. That's nice. Uh, it's a. It's we count as guests. I'm glad. Hey, okay. nice. Look at this. <laughs> Whoa! 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 Is that a giant fluorescent? Lightsaber. That's like a six-foot purple fluorescent light. It's from Hay, H-A-Y. Uh, wow. I did just knock over some things on my table pulling that out. If, but... uh, if <laughs> flames start appearing behind you, we'll let you know. Don't worry. We'll warn you. Yeah. I will. Holy yeah. cow. You could do some damage with that. It's true. All right, where were we? We're we're way behind now. Avenge my father's We've... desk. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Inigo Montoya. Uh, all right. Uh, do we do all of the stories that you want? I'm just scanning through here. <sighs> There's so much. There's so much. I think we're good. I think we're, you know, I'm there's, gonna, another, there's another AI doom letter just for the record. What we is a do doom a letter? Google what is that? Change what is that? Log. Yeah, we have that to was, do a Google change log. I'm going to throw that in. <laughs> you sound so excited. So excited. Uh, doomsters from futureoflife.org. Yeah, that's that's one of the crazy test rail people. Open letter calling on world leaders to show long view leadership on existential threats. The elders, they call themselves the elders? Well, no, that's that's an organization started by, uh, who started it? Somebody notable. Some um, old people. The Future of Life No, no, Institute. no, it was, that's, that's actually kind of half legit. Okay. But then they got pulled into the test grill people. They have decided that we are at a precipice. Our world precipice. is in grave danger. The, well, we face a set of threats that put all humanity at risk. Our leaders are not responding with the wisdom and urgency required. Rapidly changing climate, pandemic yeah, that killed funny. millions, cost trillions, wars in which the use of nuclear weapons has been openly raised. There could be worse to come. We do not yet know how significant the emerging risks associated with artificial intelligence will be. This yeah, is so funny this, yeah. that they put AI in the same category as nuclear annihilation, uh -huh. a pandemic that killed millions, and climate change, which is going to kill hundreds of millions of people. All of which are real, and they have their made-up fantasy. They try to associate it. Test real. Um, on the other hand, line 79, a, a mere 40 second video that I think is provocative and good. From Jensen Huang of uh, NVIDIA? Yep. He's uh, certainly the man of the hour, is he not? He $2 trillion sure company. Let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller. It doesn't even fit on my screen. Here he is on what students should study in school. It's, it's going to sound completely... Sorry? I want to say something, and it's, it's going to sound completely 
opposite of what people feel. Over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program and that the programming language is human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. This is the miracle of artificial intelligence. The countries, the people that understand how to solve a domain problem in digital biology Bingo. or in education of young people or in manufacturing or in farming, those people who understand domain expertise now can utilize technology that is readily available to you. You now have a computer that will do what you tell it to do. It is vital that we upskill everyone and the upskilling process, I, I believe, will be delightful, surprising. I think it's going to be true. I don't think it's quite there yet, but okay. Not quite, but I think it's, it's, it's moving there. That's why, that's why I'm working a on a new degree. Point. I don't think that everybody needs to learn to code. I think no. everybody should learn logic, how to think. I mean, those things are very important. In they everything. should understand yeah. how it works. I think critical works. thinking is way more important than yes. knowing how to code. You're going to still need that. Uh, I mean, honestly... Really, it's almost a semantic distinction. Instead of writing in the computer's language, you might be able to write in an English language. The problem is English is notoriously uh, imprecise and ambiguous. It's one of the reasons computer code exists, because it can be made unambiguous and precise. So you're still going to have that same problem of exp expressing what you want it to do precisely enough so that it understands it. It can be more English-like, but y you don't want a computer... To teach a computer how to drive a car by saying, and whenever you see a left-hand turn, make sure there's nobody coming from the right. It's not, it's too ambiguous. It's assuming the, too much knowledge. And an AI is not going to do a good job with that for a long time, I think. So learn how to think, learn how to be logical, learn how to kind of understand how these works. And learning code is like learning math. It's like saying, well, nobody's going to have to learn calculus. It's true. You probably don't have to learn calculus. But it is a discipline that trains you to think so that you can actually solve problems. So I, I'm not... I'm not completely convinced that, that he's right. No, not everybody does not need to learn to code, obviously. But everybody needs to learn how to think. And coding is one of the ways you learn that. As yeah, it's, one, it's one way. It's one way. But also do domain expertise matters. We need to study oh, human beings. Look, at everybody who learns code. Psychology and, and anthropology. Yes, but and everybody who learns computer science ethics. is taught that. That all you're no, doing not. is enabling a domain specialist to put that knowledge into a program. You what he's saying is the domain specialties are going are gonna to rule as they well they should. They always have. They always have. No. The old... Look, you it cannot write. Let, think, about the, think about a common you know, computer application, uh, uh, an accounting system. You can't write an accounting system by learning how to code. That's not how you write an accounting system. You learn how to write an accounting system by learning how to be an accountant. Having domain knowledge that then somebody, could be you, be great if it were you, could express in code. That's, I don't yeah. think uh, Microsoft Word was written by writers. It was written by people who wanted to torture writers. Well, uh, well I don't know what the domain expertise writer, who is. Who wants to torture writers more than writers, though, Jeff? <laughs> it, it, you know, every, people in computer science understand that domain knowledge is key. You don't write a program absent domain knowledge. You're not writing a, a, a anything useful. Um, and so all Jensen's saying is, well, you're not going to need the coding part. But I think he might be a little bit... You're not going to need as much of it. That. You're not going to need as much of it, but you need to be able to write precisely, unambiguously. There's a reason code exists. Human language is terrible. I think it's going to be important to know how to check the code. Yeah. Humans need to work with the code and with the domain. It's still going to be a team. I'm sorry. And there's going to be people who are expert in turning uh, domain knowledge into something a computer can, can do. Uh, all right. Now... The change log. The Google change log. These are the things that we don't really care about, but we put in here so that you... <laughs> but for some reason, he feels obligated. You know that the show's about deliver. Google. I'll give you a perfect Guys, example. Guys, we got we to gotta either change the name or we got to commit to the Google change log. No, no, log. I'm committing to it. I just want to give you an example. This is a very a perfect Google change log story. Wear OS is revamping notifications... <laughs> <laughs> to improve battery life. Hey, knucklehead, charge wow. your, your watch. Even if you wear Wear OS, 
this probably doesn't matter. But it is a change. It's an important change to people who wear OS, and I guess. we're logging it. Wear OS Hold watches on. are also getting Google Maps public transit directions and Google Wallet passes. So for those of you wearing Wear OS, there you go. Google is bringing Gemini. Actually, my wife was asking me about this. She said, should I get, she called it Genesis, but should I get Gemini <laughs> in my Gmail? And I said, absolutely. Google is bringing Gemini to Messages and adds AI text summaries for Android Auto. That's kind of cool. Let me guess. Let me just guess. It won't be available. Oh, to you? No. Probably it not. says no, that specifically. Do you personally, Jeff? No. Jeff no. can't use this. Jeff is left out. If you are an Android Auto, and this is actually kind of cool. Because, you know, I when you're driving and you get messages, it reads them to you and you can respond and you know with voice. Uh, this week, messages users will be able to access Google Gemini without leaving the texting app. And you can even use it to handle drafting messages, helping to plan events, or... If you're bored, you know, you're driving Las Vegas to Los Angeles, long, boring ride, you can chat with it. So now if you don't have anybody to message, you can message the AI, I guess. Uh, I think adding AI to messages makes sense. Google has a new AI feature that lets you write on the web. You can now turn on Help Me Write in Chrome. <laughs> Uh, I love to press the laughing. help me write button <laughs> as I open up a, a good Google Doc. I'm a professional writer, but even I use Google Gemini to write. Um, you know, I think it makes sense for messages, for emails. Like, here's the, the prompt is, plane lands at nine, ask to check in early. And it writes you an email. Hello. My flight is scheduled to arrive at 9 a.m., and I would like to check in as soon as possible. Is there any way I could check in early? If not, when's the earliest time I can check in? And then you could change the length. You could change the tone. I okay, that's I actually very, the, that's very helpful, yeah. I want to change the tone to entitled. Yes. <laughs> actually, Lisa, I want I was, to change the to tone to indignant. I was explaining yes. <laughs> this to Lisa last night, and I said, look, here's somebody you want to say F you to, but you want to do it in a nice way. So we asked it, <laughs> tell so-and-so to F off, but in a nice way. And it did a great job. It was superb. So can we do that? Can we Can we pull it up? You want to see Is it? Is this out yet? Can we? Uh, oh, can we try it? I don't, uh, let me see. To turn on this feature, sign feature. into Chrome, select settings from the three-dot menu, and there's an experimental AI page. There you'll see an option to enable help me write. I'm not using Chrome. That's so. a lot of effort. Yeah, it's too much work. We did this. I did it with a chat GPT. In fact, it's probably still there. <laughs> okay. I will say. I don't uh, want you to see you know the name of the person that we said. No. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, don't. yeah maybe don't do We that. actually meant to say F you. <laughs> Whenever <laughs> Everybody using, who got email uh, from you last night is wondering. <laughs> the little thing in Gmail where it kind of will auto suggest <laughs> sentences. A big part of my job, I got to email people. I'm like, hi, my name is Paris Marno, and I'm a journalist at The Information. And every gosh darn time that I put, I'm a journalist, it autofills at the moment. Like, oh, I'm a journalist terrible. at the moment. And I'm like, what do you know that I don't, Google? Oh, <laughs> ow. At the Ooh. moment, I'm still a podcaster, but I'm looking for work. It's true. <laughs> uh, from The Information, your colleagues, Sylvia Varnum O'Regan and Kaylee Wong writing, Questions. <laughs> questions. Meta wants Llama 3 to handle contentious questions as Google Google grab, grab rag, Google yeah, yeah, Google grapples with Gemini backlash. And there are three llamas, just in case you weren't sure what we were talking about. Uh, I will say I did oversee them doing some of the work. I'm sure I mean, they actually did actual reporting with sources for this, but I oversaw them doing some of the grunt work for this in the office the other day where we just had one of our editors pacing around the newsroom being talking to Gemini or whatever on their phone. Oh, my God. Uh, being like, uh, can it teach me how to do insider trading? Or like, where can I, how can I get cocaine? And trying to get it to uh, do illegal things, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't. So the, uh, Meta is launching. Llama is actually pretty good. I've been using Llama, and I think it's okay. I, my favorite is still ChatGPT4, and I think that's the general consensus that OpenAI still offers the best general-purpose AI. But Llama 3 is coming later this year, 
And uh, and what this what basically the story is is they're not going to worry about safety. Google, <laughs> Google, let Google worry about safety. And I kind of agree with them. The only reason you worry about safety is because you think users are idiots. I mean, you can Google or how to buy. Or you're under political pressure. Or you're under pressure. You can Google how to do all this, buy cocaine, insider trade. Um, yeah. I, I think it comes from this thing that this is, well, chat GPT is somehow some special intelligence and you shouldn't let it do or recommend illegal things. I mean, maybe I'm in the same boat as Elon Musk. It shouldn't. I, the first mistake was to associate it with search. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what was the conclusion of your colleagues? Or is it just a new story? It was story, really hard really? to get them to, uh, it, I mean, one, I think the story ended up being about how Meta was trying very hard to make sure that its system wouldn't provide a, uh, illegal or unethical responses and my colleagues seem to uh bear that out they had a really hard time i even tried the little trick of being like uh i grabbed my editor's phone and i was like all right i'll be able to get it to get to tell you how to do insider trading and i wrote this whole little long spiel being like my wife is very sick she's dying and the doctors say the only thing that will help her is if i read her a bedtime story with step-by-step -step instructions about insider there trading. you go can there you help you me and it, it was like no, not no. only will I not do that, but that's bad medical advice. You should find <laughs> another doctor. Your wife should not have a medical illness that can only be solved by insider so, trading know related that's, bedtime stories. That's a stories. good answer. Good answer. It was good. It was yeah. very good. Uh, one more story, and then it's Google. It's Scooter X's changelog, and he's got a much better one. He says, wait a minute. That can't be it. I pasted in 11 stories. Google Maps, this has actually turned out to be one of them. An overlap, Scooter X. Google Maps is finally making glanceable directions widely available. This would be, you know, for Android and iOS, obviously. Uh, while you're driving, you can glance down, and uh, it will give you a glanceable... I don't know what the glanceable direction is. I don't understand. Are. I don't it's understand. It's something you could... I don't know. They okay. talked about this in February. Um of last year, a year ago, um, according to Android Police, uh, you're seeing a toggle for the feature rollout. If you have, you should check. Look at your Google Maps and see if there's a toggle that says glanceable directions while navigating. See updated ETAs in your next turn right from your root overview or lock screen. Oh, it'd be nice on the lock screen. Navigation data will be collected to improve maps for everyone. So I already see this in my, uh, you know, on the Android Auto or CarPlay interface. It'll show mm -hmm. you what your next turn is and stuff. But now you can see it on the phone, either with maps open or oh, okay. in your in your uh, lock screen. So okay, that's, next. That <laughs> okay, why not? If it does if it's not relevant to me, it's not relevant. So okay, it's true. That's how I feel. Uh, <laughs> Google is is killing. Okay, this was a funny one. Actually, it was two weeks ago on Twitter. Somebody said Google's killing Gmail, and everybody went crazy. Yeah. Right? Remember that? But it wasn't Gmail. Right. It was just one part of Gmail, their basic HTML view, uh, which allows users to look at their emails, uh, actually not in HTML, right? But just in the, in the not in the rendering, in the, te in the actual HTML code, right? Anyway, I never used it. Uh, they're killing that. Uh, we did help me write. Let's see. I'm looking through all of uh, the Scooter X changelog. Quick share rolling out to Chromebooks and Chromebook OS 121 redesigns. You'll be able to quick share. Jeff, YouTube. I, have no, I don't know anyone. I have nobody to share anything with. Yeah. Sharing is nice. You're sharing with us. I use quick share on my, uh, on my phone all the time to share, share stuff out. But somebody who's near you, right? Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah. I guess it has to be somebody near you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. I avoid people. So. Yeah. No. I always. I'm always. Uh, you could send things to your wife. Air dropping stuff to Lisa. That's where she has. A, she's an iPhone. Yeah. Oh, that actually tracks. It being an it's, iPhone wife, Android husband dynamic yep. makes a lot of sense. Jeff. Yep. It is. That's it is. Yeah. Yeah. You got a mixed marriage. It's true love. <laughs> Bridging the divide. Uh, YouTube Kids is going on. Going away. But there'll be, really? I guess, a control. Google integrated YouTube Kids into the main YouTube app on, oh, this is on smart TVs. Yeah, that happened a while ago, I think. 
They did that last May. Yeah. Um, but the standalone, oh, I see what's going on. Uh, the standalone app is gone. Well, we'll be going. So uh, Google announced last week that the unified experience will be the only way to use YouTube Kids. Again, we haven't had kids in years, uh, so we don't care. Yeah, no, not no. relevant to us, so who cares? <laughs> um, Google Calendar for iPhone ads, lock screen widgets. I'll just read the headlines. YouTube Music web app rolling out off, rolling out offline download support. Google Photos adds activity-based personalization settings. You just get the feeling it's kind of all so trivial, right? Chromecast with Google TV is updating. Uh, fast pair, auto, audio output switching. Gemini can now access and create Google Calendar events. That's nice. Your AI can make up appointments for you if you're like Jeff and lonely and sad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you could have a full schedule. Fill my schedule. That's great. Gemini. Fill my schedule. <laughs> Make it interesting. From I was a bad noon professor. To 2 p.m., you that. have to weep silently staring out the window, Leo. Yeah. From uh, 2 to 3, <laughs> you can quietly reflect while doom scrolling. <laughs> Google's contacts. You're getting it aside by a head, Paris. Google contacts widget will <laughs> soon, soon show the person's last sent message. So when you're looking at the contacts in the widget it will show them the show you the last message they sent i found out something interesting yesterday yes i thought that i had an appointment yesterday morning and it was not in my calendar and i thought oh hell did i erase that because i knew i erased another one. Oh hell what i do i wonder whether there's any um edit trace trace of this so because i do have my special magical google account i could go into um the admin and then there is an audit uh, page. So, like I can audit all the users on my service and I could see every activity around my calendar. Everything that was so added, every reminder. It? No, I hadn't. <laughs> all right. I was not missing off anybody. And on that note, that's the Google change log. Scooter X version. Uh, let's take a little break and then we will do your picks of the week as we wrap things up and I head off to see the material girl. You're watching this week. Are you going to Vogue? I will. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're, pre you're prepared. I am so ready. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like he was showering. See, this is why you got to watch the, the video, guys, because otherwise you're just hearing silence and laughter and not getting any of the necessary just context. Imagine that Leo is voguing. Ima badly. Imagine a, a lot of thrashing. <laughs> uh, let's kick off the picks of the week with Paris Martino. Hello, Paris. Hello. So my pick of the week is a movie that came out uh, three years ago uh, that is one of my favorite movies. I rewatched it uh, on Monday, actually, and it's just fantastic. It's called Some Kind of Heaven. It is a documentary about the villages. Oh, I saw this. Do you guys know the villages? Oh, my God. This um, is so depressing. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not depressing. Everybody keeps saying it's depressing. I think it's very hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> really? This is where you want to live when you're my age? Okay, no, I don't want to live there. Okay. It is a uh it's a documentary, but it feels like a movie. Have you seen this? Yeah, it's Leo? actually you know what, you're right. It's not depressing because these people are living their best lives. They really are. Yeah, so it is well, it's following uh a couple <laughs> as well as a woman right here, her name is Barbara, whose husband recently passed, and then a ladies' man named Dennis <laughs> who's dog, living out of his van. Um, trying to and it is, the cat. It looks it looks like a Wes Anderson film. It does. But Aronofsky. It is a Darren Aronofsky is a producer. Yeah. So yeah. 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 It is gorgeous and funny, and I've probably seen it five times, and it wow. gets better every time. You know, the other thing I want to do, I'm going to give away my favorite idea that I'll never do because I can't, I'm not funny. I wanted to do basically a Seinfeld sequel set there. Oh. Right? All old people complaining. And, you know, a cast member dies, hey, it happens. It's too much like my life. By the way, a cast member from yeah. 
Curb Your Enthusiasm did just pass. I'm sad yeah, to say. Yeah, Richard, Richard Lewis. Lewis. Um, who, it, it weirdly, sad. on Curb Your Enthusiasm, they kept talking as if he was about as to if die. he was about to die. Wait a minute. Why did I just? Oh, you did. Wait that. a minute. Why did I just? Oh, you did that. What's going Hold on? Hold on. Okay, who am I? What's going on? Okay, who am I? Yeah, it's feeding back from it's Paris. feeding back from Paris changed because her uh, AirPods died. So she put on her <laughs> AirPods Max. And at that point, all hell broke loose. Because she went to her speaker, right? Is that what Guys, happened? sorry, I missed you. My <laughs> AirPods died once more immediately in the middle of the show. And then switching to AirPods Max proved difficult. <laughs> Yes, but it worked, and we're good, and we're fine. We'll just cut that part out. There Sorry. was the one depressing thing. I think it's depressing in some kind of heaven. Is the guy who's living in his van, hoping to marry or hook up with an older woman who will let him live in her house. Am yeah, I, I mean, so it's happening? all yes. That man, his name is Dennis. He uh, lives out of his van at 81 years old because he's on the run from a DUI in California, and uh, <laughs> runs out of money, and essentially has quite a few scenes with like a local pastor, other people like that. Where the pastor's like, "We're praying for you to meet a nice woman who will let you <laughs> live her. in her house with you," and he eventually. Ha it turns out he has a bunch of women who would want him to live like with them. And he goes to live with one of them for a while, but then he wants to get back out in the road and he feels, uh, you know, too contained by yeah. being tied down to He's one measly down. woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's there fantastic. It's again. probably one of my favorite films on the road again. Um, yeah. Some kind of heaven. It's uh, some kind of pick. Now, Jeff Jarvis, it's your turn. Uh, all right. Uh, I get a, we, a little video moment here. You can sign into Facebook, right? You, you have it again? Oh, God. You're really asking a lot. Okay. So, Fiji Simo, who was in charge of newsfeed at, uh, uh, or very other things at uh, Facebook, is the CEO of Instacart. And she and her, and her lovely husband and, and daughter go into a grocery store where Instacart has made the carts where all you have to do is put something in the cart and it registers. And it's really lovely and charming. All right, hold on. Are you I'm there? Lo I'm logging into I Facebook. You. Haven't used it in I a long time. Sorry. Uh, let well, me in the meantime, you could do mom's first I was going to say, Leo's opening up the app and just getting bombarded with as many oh, videos bikinis, of women bikinis. as possible. I feel like the guy who's <laughs> so hard. driving around in his van. Uh, hold on. <laughs> you're just you're you're out there trawling. Actually, this is good. Let's just see. I haven't opened it in quite a while. In fact, probably since the last time I showed you my feed. Shall we just check and see? Remember? Yeah, we should. Let's do a bikini check. Let's. Oh, that wasn't the code. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I have to enter my two-factor code. Yeah, he's doing his two-factor now, folks. Yeah. You're missing all this fun. Oh, wow, this is well. This is this good is because the, uh... I'm sh I'm modeling good security. You're Everybody right. should be doing this. Save this browser. Yes, please. Okay. Oh, Facebook's slow. Yes, I want you to remember my password, please. Wow, Jeff Jarvis. Oh, look at that. First There's thing the first there, thing the is this giant, the web we weave. Uh, and then Paul then Therott painting, painting his wall wow, green. big twist. And here's Johnny Jett and his family next to a giant pink dinosaur. So it is really all the people I know. Bill, Bill yeah, Gaines. It's okay, see, this is good. Missing? This is all people I know. No bikinis. You could have, you could have shared my book. Wow, you were a friend. Wow, mm -hmm. these are literally all people I know. Did something wow. happen? Someone with an Apple, a Vision Pro, and a Cybertruck. <laughs> oh dear. Oh boy. Nah, I don't. I don't know that guy. All right. So, so now, click now I'm going to click a link the, here. Uh, okay. In the, uh, okay. Yeah. To Mom's first VR. Wait a minute. It's a TikTok. No. That, well, oh, no. Instacart no, carts. Instacart yes. carts. Here we go. <laughs> His ah, content ah. isn't available right now. Thanks, Jeff. Was it? Because oh, I'm friends with Fiji and you're not. How are you friends with Fiji? I'm, I've oh, known Gizmo. Fiji for years. Oh. She was in charge of video there on things. All right, go to mom's first VR. 
After all that, wow! I after can't all that, see we it. saw no bikinis, no video. Yeah, that's good. Uh, well, the, you know, the work we have done to remove bikinis from my feet has has actually worked. Now I have to match a oh, puzzle piece. Oh, but up. you are potentially a robot. So all right, got to figure out that puzzle. This piece. is mom's first VR. Oh Jesus, no! Oh, <laughs> mom just oh, ran no. into the refrigerator. So uh, the is this? I think it shatters. Is oh, this? Is this? Um, oh, wait a minute. How do I get back to the beginning? Here we go. There, you do that. Yeah, that's so hard to use one? this internet thing. So, is this a it's uh, the cursor, Leo? Is it's very important. Is this a uh, Vision Pro or a Meta Quest? It looks like a Meta Quest she's wearing. All right, let's let's see. My mom's first VR experience was a bit of a disaster. Let's watch. <laughs> oh, geez. she ran into the cupboard and broke it. Wow. <laughs> Whoa! Oh she God. smashed something. The glasses. She smashed oh, the glasses. She, she smashed the glass glasses. Oh, <laughs> that that hurt. And yeah. I mean, the the ground was littered with shards yeah, of glass. Instantly. Was that a? What do you think that was? A Vision Pro? It might have had to be. I, That'd be a the very rest damn expensive plastic, first I? experience. <laughs> What's well, a VR not AR? Wow. I hope her eyes were okay. Yeah. Wow. I feel well, like that would you. be me if I thank ever you. used one. In Have you home. never you've never done that? I've used them occasionally, like once or twice. A friend did an art show uh, where you put on VR glasses and then Mark Zuckerberg instructed you on how to use a pinball machine. Oh, um, God. And that was fine. I only tripped. I only caused three things to fall over in the Im immediate area. Uh, but well, your house is a is a landmine, frankly. I know that's the thing is I could not do it here. I don't have space. I've just got too many things yeah, going on. It's, you'd fall over and all sorts since of we're stuff. minus one 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 post, I'll just give you my. I put it in the Discord just now. My favorite Facebook ad that keeps coming up. Maybe it'll come to me someday. Okay, well. Gift tinned the tinned fish club. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, the video, the audio is something. Cra craving an extraordinary <laughs> taste adventure. Unappealing. Ever dreamed of savoring the world's finest tin fish at your doorstep? Ahoy. Welcome to the Tin Fish Club. <laughs> Dive, Dive into. into a monthly journey with hand-picked delicacies like sardines and mackerel paired with specially chosen condiments for an elevated seafood experience. <laughs> okay, they shouldn't call it the Tin Fish Club. They should call it Conservas, which is what our local restaurant does. And they charge you $16 for that tinned fish and a cracker. It is a, a very fancy gourmet experience these days, believe it or not. I will say tinned fish is so hot right now. It's very hot. Brooklyn. But you tinned don't, fish has been hot for a couple but years. But don't call it yeah. tinned fish, right? What do they call it? I don't Brooklyn? know. I do think people are calling it tinned no, fish. No, I think that's it. No, that's what makes it hip. Yeah. I think I think the hot girls are talking about tinned fish. It's <sighs> like a big, uh, a big, there's, what is it? Fish wife. Fish wife is the uh, hipster hot fish or tinned fish brand they also wow. recently raised some money on, on shark tank it was hot or uh, i keep wanting to oh, say i didn't hot know fish. that oh. they call it fish sea, life sea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know here in 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 petaluma it's conservas which is the spanish for tin fish it's sardines in a can right um wow i didn't realize uh that this was hip and with it it's a thing yeah it's actually pretty good. I like it. the number of restaurants in town. That's that's a menu item. They don't again because because you live in Hipland. They give yeah. it a better name. That's the that's the. the and that's weird thing. to me because like hasn't tin fish been around forever? Yeah, it's sardines. Oh yeah, people have oh, yeah. been tinning canning fish forever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just preserving. I did it. I got some. You know, in the, in the pandemic, I thought, oh, that would be a, a variety for lunch, and I regretted it. I do like. I got really into a uh, canned tuna during the pandemic. Tuna is different. That is <laughs> well, a good kind. That's my childhood. Yeah, I love tuna. Great. Yeah, my mother made so it was it was it was Miracle Whip, Wonder Bread, yes, and tuna. It was white on white the on white. best a little wow. relish. Oh, see, mine was hip. She'd put a little celery in it to give it some. No, 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 no. 
Listen, you know yeah, I, I, do I get my uh, tuna. You get you. You got some mayo. You get some mayo uh, uh, mustard in there. You get oh. dill. You get Ooh. celery. Oh. Then you get a fancy chip of some sort. You make it into a dip situation. Oh my oh, god, that great. sounds very good. You Could know what I loved what? in the pandemic was IKEA herring. Tell me more. It's very good. They have a mustard herring and they have a pickled herring. IKEA, uh, the Ikea. flat pack furniture. Yes, yes, it's wonderful. You can also buy big bags of frozen meatballs there. Okay, well, that the meatballs I, know. I understand. How are they selling herring? Is it canned? Refrigerated. No, it's it's jarred and refrigerated. Yeah. Oh, it's not tinned. No. Oh, it's glassed. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's very good. Well, as much as I uh, hate to wrap this up, <laughs> you <laughs> this gotta go thrilling see conversation. <laughs> The Madonna is calling, but I have had a wonderful time hanging out with our two wonderful hosts, Ms. Paris Martineau, who writes for the information. Have you get did you get that feature from Signal where you can use your name yet or a handle? No, I guess not. Uh yeah. I think I, I think I have to get it in the beta. I haven't changed it though, because I've just had my okay, signal number. So we'll give out the number. It's a s it's it's a second number I got just for this. So it doesn't fine. actually ring your phone or anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, or yeah, it does. Yeah, you know, it could. It might, <laughs> it might bring a phone that I have access to. Okay. Please don't call me. I'll just put no, that out that's there. What I'm, that's what I'm trying don't to say. Don't call me and don't leave messages. Don't, don't, Use it for signal. Yes. <laughs> Two, six, it's seven. not the phone that I use. It's, it's my work phone. It's not how you reach Paris on the phone. 267-797-8655. And would you, before next week, make it a... Make a uh, I don't see. I don't have that. I'm looking for it. I want to. Signals moved away. I mean, from I think you have numbers. to download Signal Beta. I also would uh, need to figure out if I've been using the number I use for Signal. Like it's truly my work number for messaging with sources for forever. And so you still have part that, of it I is think. like no, it's still attached to yeah, that like, number. Would it still be attached yes. to it? So could I keep all my chat logs? Yes, it keeps your number. It just oh, okay. gives you another way to refer to yourself. You still need a phone. Oh, That's my understanding. Love that. Yeah. So we just, it would it. give you an alias, basically, so you wouldn't have to give out the number. Fantastic. Yeah. But now we know we can ring your desk anytime. <laughs> is this... If is, you want to languish on my desk voicemail, <laughs> please don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, uh, the Ikea herring <laughs> that Jeff was talking about. And Jeff, you're saying this is good? Your $3.49 9-ounce herring? It's very good. It's very herring. good. It looks, I've had, you know, I've had very, very good herring in. It's putrid yellow. I would describe it. That's as. mustard. Well, you can <laughs> okay. have the other. You can have the. Um, hold on. It looks. It says it can't be bought online. Did you go to IKEA during the pandemic to purchase this? Oh, I had to go there for something else. <laughs> and you just saw a fridge full of hang your herring, and you were like, and "I said I have to, to have it. Home. I must have it. <laughs> Maybe you'll just like this better. This is the." This is the marinated herring. Oh, it's got dill in it, so it's got to be dill. good. Dill. Yeah. It looks more like herring anyway. You could tell there was okay, fish involved. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's fish adjacent. All right. Uh, thank you, Jeff Jarvis. Thank you. Here's the meatballs. That's all right. I don't need that. He is the director okay. of the Town Night Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism. At the Newmark. City University of New York. Emeritus, when are you going to announce the new gig? I don't know. So, secret. Secret gig. Secret gig. Another, another domino to fall. In the middle of I love it that Ikea names the meatballs like they name their Hoover furniture. Roll. Hoover roll. It's a Hoover roll frozen two pounds and three ounces. You know, the price is right. It's only two bucks a pound. This stuff is That's cheaper than hamburger. Man, I gotta go to the IKEA, I guess. I'm yeah, and you get some nice Brooklyn, Lincoln right? Lincolnberry uh, jam to go along with that, or some yeah, roast that luck. Too. Yeah, you, you're set. You can get a bucket of fried onions. <laughs> <laughs> oh <have> yum! <laughs> a whole bucket. Holy cow! It it's really foods bugs. should come in bucket form. It is a shame that they don't mail order this because I think they could. This could be huge for them. <laughs> I do think it could be huge. <laughs> they have vegetable hot dogs, mm -hmm. cinnamon buns. 
Potato crisps. This feels like, I feel like an episode of Midsummer. You can get yeah. elderflower <laughs> syrup. Dreek uh, Flyder. Dreek Flyder. <laughs> Nothing like it. Ben, I love that their chocolate Risky. bar is called Belonging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's Belonging. Belonging. Mashed potatoes. Belonging. Mashed potatoes. Yes, a In bag of mashed form? potatoes. A frozen and Powder? mashed potatoes. In a bag. No, frozen. You, you, oh. you, yeah, no. They have marmalade. When did they start? And flatter. It's always been, I know you could always go to Ikea and have lunch. Well, they've always had this. But they've off, always offered it for, for shipping as well. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Not oh, the other chocolate bar is chocolate milk. M O U L O U T R K. Milk. 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 I'm guessing that's milk. I don't know. All right. Only one way to find out. I used to get their coffee all the time. I used to I used to go there and get the coffee and bring that home. Do you have to assemble what? that yourself? Or How it, often it, are you going to Ikea, Jeff? <laughs> well, in what? the day when we got married, young lady. We got, went a lot. Um, uh, <laughs> we basically furnished the first house out of Ikea. But like, are you just not planning ahead to where you have to make repeated had trips to Ikea? Ikea? I had a thing about Ikea. <laughs> I mean, this I is, love Ikea. I, I, I buy old Ikea. Like, stock Ikea stuff from eBay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, no, I, I was very proud that I fit our entire dining room set into my Honda Civic and then came back and made it. And it's it's like it's somebody who just watches this old house and thinks that I'm, I'm handy. It's the same thing with Ikea. I can, I can make the chair and I think I'm handy. Next time you go to Ikea, you might want to do a fake vacation like this influencer, Natalia Taylor, <laughs> yeah. who did her entire... <laughs> Her entire Instagram FOMO YOLO vacation in Bali <laughs> by posing <Yeah>. at Ikea. <laughs> it's beautiful. And then... It is. And then made even more money with 2.8 million views on the video about how she faked it everybody out, which is actually double genius. That's Swedish innovation. Yeah. She just, she just pretended... <laughs> she just pretended she was in Bali and had somebody take pictures of her. Uh, all right, we are um, <laughs> we are we're really done, really yeah, well we're done. done. We're done. As uh, someone said in the chat, another twig is in the tin. In the tin. <laughs> but the nice thing is, you can. Ro Do they still make sardine cans? Remember this, Jeff? Where you there was a little tab on it and a key that was underneath, and you put it in the yeah. key. Oh you know, yeah, you roll the it key up. and you roll it up. They still make yeah. that? Because that's the worst design. They're really design. expensive now. That is the worst design. It's terrible. Half the time, you can't get in. Oh, I'm glad to know that something. It's, like, it's like your Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's like true. my Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin we, inspired. We do Twig every, uh, every uh, Wednesday, about 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC. You can watch us live on YouTube, youtube.com slash twit, uh, or watch the show after the fact. There's audio and video at twit.tv slash twig. There's a YouTube channel with just the video dedicated to Twig. Uh, and there's also, of course, your favorite podcast player. Search for Twig and you'll be able to download it. Club Twit members get a special URL that lets them listen to it ad-free. If you're not yet a member, please join the club. Seven bucks a month. Honest, most of the shows are better than this one. This is Don't judge us by this, okay? Hey. hey. <laughs> Seven bucks a hey. month. That's hey. all it costs. Hey. 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 Come on. I'm what are we? Here. Chopped, chopped tuna? <laughs> chopped Tins tuna. Fish? What are we, herring in a tin? What are we? Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, uh, You can't I think that's get it. this premium content on any of the other shows. <laughs> no, huh? you can't. We will see you next time. Another twig is in the tin. Bye-bye.